That means I have to be quiet now. Hello and welcome to the Jenna Belk After Party. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you guys for listening uh, to the previous video if you uh, were able to catch it. If you're not able to catch it, please go back and watch it. Uh, me and Jenna had a really good conversation and uh, and got to see exactly where she came from. And uh, and now we're in the after party and I got, already got a couple people watching. Um, obviously, I got my special guest Jenna with me and I got Jimmy with me also. Inquisitive Quandary. Um, what does Neil call you? He calls you the moderator extraordinaire. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> and uh, and you, we know, got, you can call me Sally well. if I look, it's fair game. <laughs> <laughs> and we got James with us. Um, how are you guys doing today? Awesome. I'm doing That's well. Awesome. I yeah, I we have, we have awesome now. intro music. Yeah, do you know who Peter uh, going to go for it? Mm -mm. You ever heard of Peter? He has a show called Beyond Belief. Um, he's on a lot of my after parties, and he can get rowdy uh, with Pastor Taylor. Huh. It's it's quite funny. Good um, to know. I try and keep it to a minimum because my show is more about you know stuff that 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 I do to speak a little bit softer and more empathetic. And mm -hmm. Peter is kind of like R and Ra. He's he's up in your face, and this is what it is. <laughs> He's a, uh, but that's the one great, great thing about this community is everybody has their own little niche. Everybody has their own way of doing things to, to, uh, to, you know, add to the community. That's, that's what I love about it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. So Jimmy was super excited when he saw that you were going to be on my show and he definitely wanted to get uh, some questions out or have a conversation with you uh, in the after party. So I know you don't ha you don't have a whole bunch of time to hang out. Uh, Eric Murphy, hello, how are you? Hey, um, Eric. Eric's on. Um, I've been trying to. Uh, I've been I've been listening to his uh, his break time uh, or lunch break time. Uh, oh yeah. Facebook oh. Uh, stream. One second, I'm gonna open my door. <laughs> his okay, live streams during happen. lunch. Did they? But yeah, uh, Eric's in. We got Phil. Uh, yeah, I can give you a link. Uh, um, but we got Math Pig, Ricardo, Ricardo Olivero, Mindful Health. So I was listening to your interview with Matt, which I got to go finish. <laughs> um, I just went and I typed your name. I found your channel, so I made sure to subscribe. Yay, thank uh, you. Others should do that too. Um, I enjoyed your conversation with Justin. Um, I haven't actually seen you on the Atheist Experience yet, but then again... I've missed a few because um, I went through a Christian period again here recently. So, oh, that's okay. Uh, a lot of confirmation bias. Ah, that's tough. That really is. So uh, I know we spoke. Uh, you know, you've been in my after parties quite a bit, and there was a couple times to where you're in the middle of the conversation. Hey, Justin, you are, are you talking? Yes, yes, I am. He can't hear me. Can't hear him. I can hear him. It's my mic again. Uh-oh. <laughs> no, but James, uh, when he first came onto my after parties, he was he was a Christian, and he was arguing for Christianity, and he, he, he had quite a bit of information to give and whatnot, and within these after parties that he's been on, um, he came out on uh, – I don't know if he exactly came out on my after party, but he definitely said – um, what we're talking about right now is, is really making me consider being an atheist again. And awesome. It is awesome. I just wanted to make sure that he wasn't going to be losing any uh, family members or friends or anything for, for coming out because that's, that's a big thing. Um, I don't think you have come out completely as an atheist yet. Am I correct? You're, you're just James right now, right? Uh, right now, just James Gibson. Okay. All right. So he's, he's not fully, he's, he's on the fence, if you will. So, hmm. uh, 
we'll do everything we can to, to try and help him. And I like that he's in these after parties because you know we have we have people of belief in here giving both sides of the story, kind of kind of like you, Jenna, when you were looking into these debates and whatnot, and you wanted to see both sides. You know, it's it's something that that I like, so everybody can get all the answers instead of just being fed one line. Well, but there's no answers. There's no there's not necessarily any answers. It's just you know, ask the questions that you have and be honest with yourself and keep asking questions and that's it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Jimmy, what did you, what did you want to speak with Jenna about? Um, I was going to ask you a question if you don't mind. Just <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. No pressure. <laughs> um, well, I had a friend that had that attitude of like, you know, there's no answer. It's like, we're never going to find out. And, um, uh, I mean, like when I was a teenager, we would, uh, have like, you know, these philosophical conversations with each other. And whenever it would get like, I guess too deep for lack of a better word, uh, he would like kind of curl up and say like, Oh, we're never, we're never going to know. We're never going to find out. And like, but anyway, he, he ended up committing suicide at 21. And, uh, you know, he's one of my best friends. I grew Sorry. up with him, uh, as, uh, you know, in kindergarten, I, I, I felt, you know, he was like a brother to me. And uh, 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 like four days later, another one of my friends did the same thing. Mm. And it, it was a real dark time. It was a real dark time. Um, but, uh, you know, they had that attitude of like, um, we're never going to find out. And and I think, you know, in, in religion, uh, there's a context where there's a way to find out. And, I, so you know, I don't know... If, um, an empathetic atheist told you, but I, I'm probably the only atheist in the room. <laughs> you know? Well, no, I can see that, and that's that's a definitely a fair point. Um, but so so what I mean when I say that there's no answers is that what I what I mean is that once you find the answer to one question, you're going to find more questions. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. Is there's it, it, mm -hmm. you're just gonna find more questions. <laughs> Uh, so I, I think that's exciting. It, it, I think that it, makes it, it kind of like a never ending puzzle. You know, it's, it's when I, when I'm looking for a good book, I want something that's going to keep me entertained for a while. I don't want a book that's going to, when I'm, you know, a good book that I settle into, I don't want it to be 15 pages, mm -hmm. I, you know? So, uh, yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you. I, I but I, I, I guess the, from a theistic perspective, like, mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily like, um, you know, my life's about asking question, get answer, asking question, get answer, asking question, get answer. You know, there's a, a framework that they understand that just where they just live their life. Like, mm -hmm. uh, for, in, for instance, in, in Zen spirituality, um, they say that, uh, you know, it's it's not about peeling potatoes while thinking about God. Zen spirituality is just peeling potatoes. Mm -hmm. You know, because they have this understanding where they're in, already embedded within this framework. They don't have to worry about it. So they're not, you know, constantly asking questions, getting an answered. They can be curious about life. They can be curious about the universe. They can become scientists and become what, what have you, physicists, and and still, you know, have a complete respect for nature and, and, and the, you know, um, the reflection of the way things are, the formation of stars, evolution, and so forth, you know? Um, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know if you've ever thought about it that way. Yes, uh, actually, no, totally. I, and I love that. And I just want to kind of let you know that there's there's a way to be uh, inquisitive and curious um, and also have this level of Zen and peace about you. Like, for example, me, like I am extremely. So this is the interesting thing. Yes, I have up days. I have down days. I have really hard days and I have really good days. But I also have um, <laughs> I totally forget where I was going with this. Oh, sorry, Zen and Peace. Um, so I also have a very curious mind that I found out that I had, I thought I had a lot of answers to a lot of things and I mm -hmm. found out that I don't anymore. And so I'm right, right now I'm trying to fill in those gaps. Yeah. Um, so right now it's kind of like an empty void. So I'm kind of sucking in everything and I'm just kind of desperately mm -hmm. seeking information. But at the same time, as I'm doing that, I'm getting to more and more to this piece. So like kind of this level state where I just kind of, 
You know, it just, it is what it is. It's becoming my number one favorite phrase. It, yeah. it just, you know, because uh, I, 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 <laughs> well, I tend to obsess uh, over joking. things because of the way that I was raised. And so I get really caught up in like, oh my God, I can't find the answer. Okay. You know what? Yeah. It is what it is. And then it'll keep yeah. going and keep no, being I, what it is. A, there's a cat down the road. He's always yeah. telling me that. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. <laughs> I'm serious. Yeah, we all think we have the answers. And you know, what's that quote? Uh, as the circle of knowledge grows exponentially, so point. does the circumference of darkness surround the searching yeah. and love information. Uh, it turns hey, to wait, say that again. As, as the, as, as, as as the, the surface area. As the circle as of as knowledge sphere. grows exponentially, so does the circumference of darkness surrounding it. I can see that. Uh, it means the more that we know, the more questions we understand that we don't have answers to. Yeah. And you know, that's an also another one from Elon Musk. Uh, he said is that the right question is sometimes harder to come by I than the right like answer. Searching, Agree. yeah, I like digging that. And reading. Um, the, the quest to know whether or not there is a God just seems like it's always called the great debate. It's the the greatest question: Is there um, meaning is there a purpose? Is there something after we die? And so I feel like it's a worthy cause to explore everything that I can, but I may have to arrive at the conclusion that, that there more than likely isn't anything after we die. And um, maybe the greatest thing I can do is honor the time that I have here. I agree. I, you know, I, I think, um, you know, that's a, I, a very common perspective, but you know, uh, you know, amongst uh, especially atheists, like you know, like the end is. Uh, Richard Dawkins talks about this, like uh, it, when when we die, consciousness blinks out, and, and that's it. Um, I don't know if you've heard Graham Hancock, Hancock say, like, how does Richard Dawkins know this? Has he died? You know, entered this voidness, come back to let us know that we're just going to go into nothingness. You know, um, I don't know if you've ever heard that criticism against that, but. Uh, you know, there, there's a, a, an opposite spectrum that this, these these things are viewed in. Uh, one one question that I wanted to ask Jenna was that uh, she said she mentioned that she came to this eureka moment while watching YouTube videos uh, when you had this job that allowed you the opportunity to to do that. And um, you said that uh, one thing you, I was going to ask was like I, I didn't hear you mention it in in, the, in your interview with Fantastic Atheist. You said. Um, the YouTube algorithms got going. Mm -hmm. And you said when you first, I, I, I heard an interview that you did with, uh, uh, it wasn't uh, uh, the nonprofit, I think, you're on the nonprofit. Mm -hmm. And you said um, the atheist algorithms got going. And you started mentioning Christopher Hitchens, Sam Harris. Uh, and so, in other words, what I'm trying to imply is that the atheism, atheism uh, the, the, the YouTube algorithms got gearing up towards atheism, like towards, you know, they started, they started showing you Christopher Hitchens and Harris, like, you know, uh, arguments towards atheism. Um, I, I want you to consider this. Mm -hmm. What if when you started clicking on those videos and the YouTube algorithms started gearing up in the opposite direction and you started hearing people like Adam Watts, Otis Huxley, you know, maybe these are names you've never heard of. Um, uh, and, and it started gearing up towards arguments towards theism. Do you think you would have a different perspective right now? I don't think so. Um, well, maybe. Okay, so the thing is, I wanted to hear as non-biased as possible. I wanted to start from ground zero, mm. and I typed atheist, theist, right there right yeah i remember that and remember so that. but it was it was hours and it was days of hours of listening to yeah. debates but from both sides so i was listening to the mm -hmm. atheist yes but i was also listening to the hardcore william lane craig debate you know i was listening to both sides yes and so what the re uh, the thing is hold on the thing with the youtube algorithms is the reason that they got me to the egg the atheist experience quickly is because those work based off of the what i click on I was yeah. more interested in hearing more, wait, 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 what was this that they talked about? What was this yes. that they talked about? And so that's why it got me there is because that's where people tend to end up. So that's how that works mm. is because those are the questions I began asking. And mm. I, I began 
clicking that direction? Um, well, I, I don't know. Have you ever uh, listened to the interview with Neil deGrasse Tyson and Richard Dawkins? I've listened to many interviews. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, uh, you, you're familiar with Neil deGrasse Tyson, the mm -hmm. physicist? Okay. Uh, he did an interview. Yeah, the astrophysicist. He did an interview with uh, Richard Dawkins. And, uh, you know, Richard Dawkins was telling him that he was initially a theist. And he was getting very persuaded by uh, the, the Jesuit priest, uh, Pierre de, de Chardin. I, I don't know if you've heard of him. He talks about the Omega Point. And, and Richard Dawkins was saying that he felt that um, he, he read a criticism of some other, uh, another scholar on, on Chardon uh, and uh, Teilhard de Chardon. And, and, and he, he bought into the criticism. Oh, he said. You're freezing up, bro. I got, I got, he uh, bought I in. Yeah, I got, sorry. He bought I don't into, know if I cut out right there. Yeah, I got, he bought into. Oh my God. All right. I can hear y'all perfectly. The last thing I heard was he bought in. I can hear y'all perfectly. I'll open my door. I can probably, because I'm kind of far away. Can, can y'all hear me? All right. Mm -hmm. I can hear you <laughs> I can now. Hear you. No? Uh, man. Maybe if you tried summing okay. up your question right. in like a oh, Give me one second. Give me one second. Give me a good jump off point. Uh, I don't want to cut it right. short, but I do. I really do have to go to bed soon. No, no, no. You're good. Just can we summarize it? Okay. Man. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. The, the what I was going to say was version. that uh, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson said, "Hey, Richard, you didn't have to be swayed to this guy's criticism. You could have said, hey, this is dog shit. Teo Chardon is a genius. F you. You know, he didn't have to be swayed in that direction." And what I'm saying is that you kind of you're kind of telling me that you were swayed in Richard uh, Sam Harris and Christopher Hitchens, so you started clicking in that direction. Mm -hmm. You're kind of saying the same thing Richard Dawkins is saying. You know, I, I and, don't and know. That's what Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> Neil, that's what Neil deGrasse and Tyson Neil deGrasse Tyson pointed out to Richard Dawkins. You got. I'll send you that interview. I, I'm your friend, by the way, on Facebook. I don't know. If, I'm wrecking. Cool. Me. I don't know if you've seen me. Awesome. I, Thank I, you. I post a lot of <clears throat> I, I, I don't. I don't believe that I. I had a choice in believing. I don't. I. I don't know. Sorry, <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> you did mention that you yeah. listened to a lot of. Debates. It is what it is. No, I agree. And she, I like putting um, it this way. Chase, Sarah, Sarah. Hold on, hold on, hold on, be, hold on, Jimmy. Jim, not, Jimmy James is talking real quick. <laughs> not to put any words in Jenna's mouth, but she did. No, no, say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Go she ahead. did say that she did her best to look at both sides of the coin that she didn't run to a confirmation bias. So she said that she that. looked at, that. looked at debates and conversations. So I think it's, um, it's only yes, fair I, I to that. give somebody that. And um, I don't think you meant to imply confirmation bias, but uh, sometimes these yeah. conversations no, no, no. can point that way. But I, I, I believe she uh, looked at several debates um, I liked her conversation with Matt Dillahunty, which I'll link it in the after show chat later. Thank you. So you guys can go back and watch it. Um, I, I, Jenna, before you go, uh, mm -hmm. Lucid Dreams, I really love what you're doing. Keep it up. You know, you. Uh, all, all the power to you. Please, uh, you know, don't get discouraged. You know, oh. um, and, discouraged. And, you know, right? <laughs> discouraged. <laughs> I mean, don't, I mean, like, uh, no, no, I mean, like, well, whatever flack you may be getting for what you're doing. I, you know, uh, a lot of people have okay. misconceptions about these things, you know? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and, you, and if, you, if you just pay attention to that, you can get downtrodden and, and, and you know, just, you know, that's what I mean by discouraged. And, that's and, uh, sweet. Yeah, don't let, don't let that affect you. Thank you so much. That's very sweet. Something I'd like to add in real quick. Yeah. Uh, something that Jimmy had said that I believe is one of the most profoundly depressing things about I guess modern philosophy is that the biggest question we're taught to think and believe that the biggest question is the God question and I do not agree with that um, it's a big question but that's not something that's observable or falsifiable yes to me, we're the here biggest, talking about it. <laughs> the biggest <laughs> question is who am I Agreed. Fucking because if you, find, if you find that out, 
so many other things will fall into place for your life that are so much more beneficial and worth your time. Figure out who the fuck you are before you try to go chasing rabbit holes. Yeah. Please. We're over um, we're over the god. I I think that at the thing that with the information that we have available to us humans on the planet at present day, I think that we're over the god stuff and on to the end of you're right, on to the individualistic stuff. So it's there's, there's a little bit there's a little bit of a hint. When you've been asking the same question for three thousand years and still don't have the answer. <laughs> Maybe the answer is really not there. So. Maybe you're well, asking the wrong questions. Well, uh, here, here's how I would put it: uh, uh, You know, over the Greek temple, there was a, a message before they entered, and it said, "Know thyself." And, That's cool. You know, and they said, you know, when you deep when you dive deep into that question, you know, uh, you, you don't necessarily have to call it God. You know, um, the Taoist sage said the name that could be named is not the eternal name. Whatever we call that ultimate thing about the most that reflects the truest aspect of reality, it, it doesn't have an, a, a name. It's nameless. It's it's nameless and it's eternal. And but you know, uh, you don't have to. I think people get caught up in semantics, and we have to get beyond the semantics. And I think you know, that's very hard to do. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's hard, it's hard for me to do even, and I'm working on it still. Yeah, I, I have an well, issue with, with that point, but I, I don't know if Jenna, you need to get going. Well, if you're I, not I, so I, I get into oh, that. Just because, just because you just hopped on, just real quick. Yes, I can chat real quick for one second. Um, hi. Okay, but, but Jamie, let's come back to you later. I want to, I want to talk to you about yeah, that. Yeah, definitely, man. I, I can stick around for a bit. I, I just wanted to, to bring up on the, what you had said before, and this goes back to what Jen had said a couple weeks ago on the show about uh, not having enough information or, or being a new atheist and thinking you had to learn everything and that, that kind of concept. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's interesting. When I, when I started this myself, um, it's, you, think you, you think you're not smart enough to get into it yeah. at, at all. You think you you know, I'm, I'm, it's nice to have people around me now, but uh, they're all the smart ones and you think you'll, you'll never get there. Uh, and then you find out the reality, which is that for every answer you answer, you get three more questions, right? It's like yeah. what, what watching <laughs> Lost from a couple of years ago. Yes. <laughs> but you just keep poking it. It's, it's, if it's, it depends on what your interest level is, right? I would think. It, absolutely. And it, it's whatever rate you want to go. You know, I just happened to have a lot of free time and, um, mm -hmm. and I happened to have um, found certain resources available to me that presented information to me in a way that was entertaining and that I or wanted to learn more. And mm -hmm. each time I asked another question, I found another, you know, rabbit hole to go down. And I found out I can do that very easily, kind of like I am with this sentence. Um, so, <laughs> I mean, if, if you're interested, right? I mean, you go down the rabbit holes if you want and it depends, mm -hmm. everybody's got their own rabbit holes. And some people are like, you know the philosophy is too is too much. Uh, that right. was a, uh, that was a snag for me. It's like everything was about epistemology and an ontology, and it's like it took me forever to figure out what the hell those words mean. Mm -hmm. And 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 some days yeah, I'm not yeah. in the mood for philosophy. Some no, days I'm like, you know what? I can't deal with the free will stuff right now. Hold on, you know. Yeah. So and but the thing is, like I I thought when I you know, started volunteering at the ACA. I'm like, Hey, you know, it'd be like cool in 10 years or so. I might be able to be on the atheist experience once, you know? And, um, when I was asked to be on, I thought, okay, well I'd have to, I'd have to have a lot of training. No, nope, 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 nope. nope so nope. what was that like? I haven't had a chance to watch you on that show yet. I mean, what was like, what was that like just coming on without getting into the philosophy and the fallacies and all that from the very beginning? Um, scary, but very, very helpful to have Matt right next to you. <laughs> yeah, wow, <laughs> this is true. Uh, I'm learning. I'm learning a lot from him, and he is a very good teacher, and he's very, very patient. I mean, imagine being having to be patient with the caller, not only the caller, but your co-host. You know, yeah. so so he he's doing a lot, and I'm I'm very grateful to every to him for having me on there. Um, but yeah, it, it's it was scary, but. And in the end, I'm just being me. I'm asking the questions that I want to know. <laughs> Eric. Um, yes. Yes. They, put, they yeah. put me to work. But I'm so thankful 
for the opportunities that I've been given. So nice, nice to hear. Yeah. Well, thank y'all so much. Any any last things, real quick, real quick, real quick. I just want to thank you for coming on for like the twentieth time. It was absolutely amazing. <laughs> thank you again. And um, if you ever are catching my show and you hear something that you want to talk about and we're in an after party, shoot me a message. I'll, I'll bring into the after party if you'd like to get in on the conversation because we, we've had some really, really good conversations. We've had some really, really redundant conversations. But at the end of the day, we're all still, you know, we're all still trying to, trying to have good conversation with each other. So by all means, if you ever want to jump in, shoot me a message. And as, I, as I'm jumping out, I just want to say it, for anybody here, for anybody watching, um, I, I am very willing to have one-on-one -on -one personal conversations with you through Facebook about this kind of thing. All that I ask is that you do not expect me to respond right away because I have right now even a lot of these conversations happening and a lot of people getting upset with me that I'm not responding quickly enough. <laughs> I'm like... I'll keep this conversation going and I will have them. I love having them and I'm so grateful to people having them with me. Just be, please be patient with me is all that I ask. Hey, uh, Jen, you need, you need to realize you have, go ahead. I'll, I'll be patient. I'll be very patient. Uh, just look out for reckoning, reckoning. All right. Uh, that's uh, my handle on Facebook. Awesome. Thank y'all. All right. We'll take care. Anybody take care. have anything else for Jenna before she leaves? You are. All right. No, Find me on you. Facebook. All right. <laughs> thank you. Bye, Jenna. Have a nice okay. night. So, is there atheism philosophy? Oh my God! <laughs> is that what I heard? Bruh. Is that what <laughs> I heard? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. He's going off of a show show he had last night that we were talking. Yeah, about. I know, I know. I, 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 I want to say, say hi to. I want to say hi to Noah. I was trying to, to get in, man. I was trying to miss you. <laughs> go I met uh, I met Noah through a Facebook group. Uh, I snuck my way into a Christian apologetics group to have some conversations, and and me and Noah got to talking. And uh, he's actually we're actually going to be he's going to be one of my special guests here in the next uh, couple of weeks, I think. Um, yeah, next Tuesday, yeah. But yeah, we'll, we'll we'll try out the after party and see how it goes. And we have hold on, we have one, two, three theists, and one, two, we have three atheists. So. Yeah, let's let's get to it. So <laughs> let's do it. Go, Pastor <laughs> Taylor. Wait, can I can I can I just before you start that? Can I just answer the 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 thing that Jimmy had started before, just to make oh, that sure, point sure. before yeah. I forget. So Jimmy, you you were talking about um, not to get too hung up on on what you call Semantics. the God or the Great Divine or or something like that. Yeah. Um, I I. I have a bit of a pet peeve with that because I think it's important that we use some some definitive name for what we're talking about. I mean, it depends on kind of what phase you are in. If you're if you're in that sort of search phase uh, where you're checking out different religions and and some non some spiritual stuff that's outside of religion, yeah. then it might kind of make some sense. But I, I absolutely agree with you. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I mean, I've, I've, I've I was seen... trying to make a deeper point than that. I was trying to make it like I absolutely agree with you. I, I, I was saying if you bought into like the you know the um, uh, cyclical model of the universe where you get the big bang, big crunch, no words are going to be remembered between that. You know, the universe is you know it's big bang, big bang, bang, bang. So, you know, these universes are going to go on forever, um, and so like whatever name they developed in that bubble. It doesn't matter. They're just different sounds for the same source, and and I, I was trying to make that point. Well, I mean, because um, it reminds you know, me of, of like um, when 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 Einstein said something about God yeah. doesn't play dice, and then Hawking said at mm -hmm. the end of his first book that uh, then you'll know the mind of God, and then a lot of theists jumped on that. Oh, Einstein actually means God. Yeah. And Hawking means God, mm -hmm. and the people talk about yeah. Spinoza, oh, no, and, God, and and that it yeah. really can, it really confuses the the conversation when we're trying to have um, give explanations of natural things to people who believe in supernatural well, things. Have, so, have you have you are you read up on Spinoza's God? Like you know? Uh, no, I'm yeah, not. A lot I'm of not, people uh, have the misconception that Spinoza. 
people, uh, a lot of people have a misconception that Spinoza was equating the universe to God, you know, and that's a very okay. common misconception. Well, cor and, correct, correct me, man. And, uh, me. You know, Go ahead. <laughs> if you, okay, all right. Uh, uh, he more accurately meant uh, uh, what uh, a lot of, uh, I guess, uh, the terminology has geared towards uh, this term panentheism as opposed to pantheism, uh, which means all inside God. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the absolute in philosophy. It's one of the most profound concepts in philosophy. If you know any philosopher not familiar with it, it's um, you know you, you're not studying philosophy. <laughs> but, Explain uh, it. I mean, I I work on okay, philosophy well, a little bit, but I don't okay, study it. All so. right. Well, the the absolute represents all the permutations that can happen within, like uh, let's say the bubble. Let's say you consider the universe a bubble. Okay. Every single permutation that can happen within the physics. Uh, all the sum of that is referred to as the absolute, and and the uh, mystics uh, throughout history claim a direct experience of that. So, in other words, it's not in an ordinary uh, in a state of consciousness. We're talking right now, like I speak to you, you speak to me, and time flows. Uh, when mystics have this experience, all time, past and future, collapse into a moment, and and that is the impression inside that religious experience. Not many people have had that. That's why you hear of the Buddha, the Jesus, and so forth. Um, well, that's the that's the feeling they get, but it's uh, it's not necessarily it's a feeling. It's not necessarily a feeling. That's what it's I'm a, asking. You're suggesting there's something more more than yeah, a feeling. it's a it's a it's a powerful transformation of your consciousness. Uh, powerful. Yeah, that's that's where yes. that's where I will part uh, with you on the concept. <laughs> oh, yeah, a lot <laughs> of people do. This is where people drop off. Because uh, I, mean, yes. I, mean, I was just reading something about, about uh, the, the neurology, actually, uh, about a certain part of the brain that yeah. somebody was studying um, um, people who meditate and nuns that were praying and things, and yeah. they found the part of the brain that was... Do you know was, what meditation uh, is? Do you let, know me what just finish, let, me, let me finish Go this, because I, I, will, I will lose my train of thoughts, though. Who, who, uh, I want, I'm who, asking you. I, I, I'm, I'm curious to think. I, I, wanna, I wanna want to pick your thoughts. One topic at a time. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so there was this, part, this one portion of the brain. Yeah. I think we've got a delay. I'm 61 years old. So. <laughs> I'm sorry, man. <laughs> Memory goes. Um, go for it. I'm sorry. I don't mean so, to. So there's, this part, there's this portion of the brain that, 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 that basically turns down or turns not completely yes. off, but turns down. And it was, it was, it was a, por a portion that, um, was the same in when people meditated strongly um, and were, were really into the prayer. And what it, that part of the brain determines de determines the feeling of self. It it gives you the 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 feeling of where your body's edge is, for example, because you have to have that to to be able to communicate your your sensations to your brain and stuff. So when you lose that connection, when that part of the brain gets suppressed, you get this sort of out of body connection yeah. with the universe kind of feeling. So it's a very natural well, see, process that we argue. now have some documentation of. I would argue that people who have not had this experience, they kind of uh, chalk it off to that narrative. Like, you know, the, the, it's called the deep thought mode network, by the way. Uh, it's the, anything that you relate to your egoic self in, in the neuroscientific terms, you know, the, uh, they're trying to explain it in, in neuroscientific terms. And so um, they say it gets suppressed on these psychedelics, but that's the narrative that you read. That's what you read. That's not what you experience inside of that. It's very different. Well, I mean, that's, that's the evidence that, that no, no, yes, that's that, the scientific that evidence we have. to the to the experience. But you have to which, remember that sci neuroscience doesn't even can't even explain consciousness. They can't even uh, determine yeah. where it's coming from. They they don't know. They don't even know if it's generated by the brain. Uh, uh, you may have a pet peeve, okay. but I guarantee. Hey, look up any try. Find me a single study that shows definitively that consciousness is no, generated by the brain. We're not, you we're will not, never find it. We're a couple hundred years away from that. I think. Yes, you will never find it. Oh, don't say never. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Oh, no, no, never no, no. I mean, right now. I mean, right now. I mean, right, now. right now, we're not. Yeah, we don't have yeah, the technology yet. I'm speaking yet. hyperbolically, but yes, yeah. uh, you know, we, we we may. I mean, that's the assumption. Now, who knows? Science. To me, science can't have a mystical experience. It can't have science can't have a religious experience. Only humans can. You know, like so, science can only right. go so far in explaining it. You can only oh, you, read no, about you, you don't, no, you don't know that. You don't know how well, science, well, 
science doesn't have a limit. That, see, that's the thing. We well, don't. What know, I'm saying is, we we don't know how far it can go. It, it only goes yeah. so far currently as we have the ability to go. Yeah. We don't know. If what it's I'm going trying to, to say is that there's a distinction you between you can't say the never. You can't put never in there. I'm, I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying there's a distinction between reading about how much we know. So science may figure out everything we know about mystical experience, and you can read it in a text, but that's very different from actually experiencing. Uh, I'll give you that in the sense that, you know, what you see as a color is just not necessarily what I see as a color. You know, we both say that's green, that's green, but sure. we do not connect each other's brains to that same perception. Yeah, but it, I mean, that doesn't matter because whenever you see that shade, I'm always going to register it as that. We're, all, we're always going to both call it green, even though we may see it as, as different colors. If we compared it, if we, some, if we could somehow perceive it in comparison, you know, yeah. but, but nevertheless, we're always going to refer to it as green, as red, because it's always going to register on that spectrum. You know, that's where okay. people confuse themselves. Um, okay. You know, they don't see that it's like that. It's not just random. If it's going to be uh, tilted, it's going to be tilted in the same way you tilt your tint on TV. You know, that's more kind of how it works. It's not going to just be random chaos. Yeah. Okay. Before this gets any deeper, I do have to head out. I have to be awake very early in the morning. <laughs> hey, man, it it's always a a wonderful talking, talking with everybody briefly. <laughs> you too, but you? I have got to go. All right. Thanks for popping in, bro. Yep. So, everybody have a good night. Morning. Good whatever night. the fuck it is where you are. Yeah. <laughs> Cheers. Take care. So, so Jimmy, what does that do for our theory, though, about the ACA? Because you saw, you saw yeah. Jenna here, here clearly telling us that she's a volunteer. I don't know, man. After listening to Jenna, she wants to promote a very, you know, um, respectful community within the ACA, man. She doesn't want to be represented with any um, hoax, uh, conspiracy theory uh, <laughs> associated. Because me, me and Taylor had some thing going on where we weren't sure where the funds were going, man, and... Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I don't want to say that because uh, Jenna was on and she spoke so respectfully towards it, man. I don't want to sully that, man. But she said we're, she was a volunteer, so you know what that does, right? That means that she either she's, she's being not paid from the underground drug money or there is no underground drug money. No, I'm pretty sure she gets paid, dude. I, I'm pretty sure they all get paid, Eric, all of them, dude. They, they have to. You know what, what? I mean, like, they're trying to make it their you know, the thing, you know, like they don't want to go back to work. <laughs> um, no, are you familiar with ACA? Well, of course. So, no. I, I've, I've, I've spoken to Matt Dillahunty, Tracy Harris, Russell Glasser, uh, Eric. Uh, I've spoken to Jamie Boone. I've spoken to uh, uh, Objective McDan. I've spoken to all of them. It's all of them, man. Yeah. No, uh, I, I'd look it up. You, you might actually be interested in calling into them sometime. It's a, it's a call-in show. So the ACA is the Atheist Community of Austin, and they yeah. have live, uh, they have live shows, kind of like mine, but they actually take have a phone number at the bottom of their screen that you can call, and you can call them and talk to them about about the things that we talk about in the Facebook groups and the things that we talk about on this show. You can basically call in and say, hey, I have evidence for God, or I'd like to speak about this or speak about that. And you can actually talk to talk to other people uh, that are on the show. I've been on Truth Wanted, which is one of their shows. I've co-hosted uh, Truth Wanted before. So we had people calling in to us, uh, talking to us about certain things. I actually had an anti-theist call in and tell me that he knew for a fact that there was no God. And I, and I said, how, how can you possibly get to that position? And no, and at, with an absolute certainty. Damn. But, uh, but yeah, Noah, kind of, kind of, you've been quiet. I, I'd like to, I'd like to hear a little bit about you and, and, and uh, what you believe, and and we might be able to dive into some some conversations with that. Well, um, I'm a Christian, like a Baptist, I guess would be the best way to put it. Um, right now, I'm in Bible college. That's actually where I am right now, um, Pensacola Christian College, and. Not every Baptist belief, but generally just Baptist theology is what I believe in. And uh, grew up Christian home, went to church ever since. Started questioning things a lot, though. Like, um, I do like to know exactly why people believe what they believe. 
and I'm mm-hmm. not generally just accepting of everything that I'm taught. Like I want to prove it out for myself. So I started like getting into looking into uh, atheist Facebook pages and listening to people like you, um, just kind of to help me understand what I believe better, and then also to know what atheists believe because a lot of time you get told things but that's not necessarily what they believe. So. Now I'm I'm curious. To do you, are there any questions that you've asked um, in your own head or, or have come up in your classes or something in your mind that you didn't hear what you thought were good answers to satisfactory answers to? Um, sometimes the whole like why does um, God like is okay with genocide in the Old Testament? I haven't really heard any spectacular answers. I've heard ones that were decent, but uh, most kind of just comes down to uh, he can do what he wants. <laughs> and I feel like there's probably a better answer to that. I, I, I tell you, I mean, one, I think one thing is this, when you have, just consider the option that you have, that you have a character who is written by people and there are inconsistencies within the story, within the Bible itself. It's hard to because I usually don't go down this road, it's, it's hard to figure out the logic for essentially a fictitious character that is written inconsistently. Mm-hmm. You know, so there's there's that perspective. Um, um, and then when you, if you want to look at the Bible as um, the, the Old Testament, particularly the God who is relatively consistent and being a nasty guy, then you get, then you really do have to deal with the why, why would he, you know, why would he be such a bad guy? And mm-hmm. is that really worthy of of, um, of somebody to to follow? But to, to me, that question brings me back to the first one. If if it's if he's really that bad a guy, maybe maybe there are the the different authors and the different writers and the different stories that all just sort of came together in sort of a a natural sort of oral storytelling storytelling way, and it wasn't really uh, revealed. Thing. I mean, you can make a stronger argument that the Book of Mormon or the Quran is revealed because it's pretty strongly one writer. But uh, the, the Christian Bible, I, I don't see it. So, I mean, I know that's it's Taylor's realm, uh, you know, and he'll he'll spend a lot of time there, and and so will a lot of people in terms of trying to figure out. You know, how, how do you explain this or that behavior? And the apologetics and the logic is all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um, and some of the some of the um, some of the uh, the reasoning has to go to to explaining, like you, when you hear people say, uh, give explanations about how slavery is okay back then, but it's not okay now, and times were different. It, you know, the logic just doesn't make sense. Mm. So and it depends a lot too, and like the denominations that you asked too. There's a lot of different answers, even amongst Christians. Well, that's that's part of that's part of the problem too, because I mean, even if even if there is a, a deity and 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 you've got this book, he seems to be presently absent. I mean, we don't see miracles that like are described in the Bible back then. Um, so why is this guy not why? Why is this guy not here now? Yeah, I know so right. you've got you've got a a thousand different interpretations. I mean, we've seen in this show alone between between Taylor and um, Kodak. Oh, no, is it Mike? Uh, I can't think of his name. Richard. Oh. We've got very yeah. unique, like oh, no, know, not interpretations I'm... that. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, no, but Kodak, you know, Kodak, because because he, Kodak's he a better example. He has a and Coda he has an interpretation that is totally his, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's, just, it's bad enough. We've got I don't know ten to thirty thousand different interpretations of Christianity on the globe, let alone how many people like Richard uh, that if, are if walking go, around with uh, and Taylor that are walking around with singular interpretations. <laughs> you know, no, but, uh, come on. A comparison to me and Matt's it's like be comparing uh, Eric here, here to like Chairman Mao and say like, well, look at the atheist. One atheist is the head of China, and then the other atheist is. No, oh, man, come on. I'm just it's saying, like, not Taylor, like I'm just saying you guys, you guys have your own unique interpretation, and it's you know it's hard enough to figure out what 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 the Bible really means and what it says and when it's inconsistent. To to be able to, you know, at at best you can go to some sort of uh, no, it, can, um, 
uh, consensus of. I tell you, uh, me and. Hmm? So, are you, you, are you familiar with hey, Michael? What's going on, Eric? Thanks for coming on. Yeah, absolutely. I uh, I was getting ready to head out, and uh, I heard uh, Jimmy say that uh, he thought we got paid at the ACA. When I, Jimmy, we don't get paid a penny, my, my friend. I, uh, I I uh, I helped set up uh, Talk Even, and um, I'm the main host. Um, I built the website, and I spent money out of pocket, actually, to help build it up, but um, never gotten paid. It'd be nice if we could, but it's, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. but but I but would the love thing to is, if the I had Elon Musk money, I would pay Eric a full sixty thousand dollar a year salary. <laughs> would be nice, would be nice, but no, um, a hundred percent of the money that comes into uh, to the shows goes to charity. So nice, yeah. That's that's why I've got my private channel that way. Uh, can build up from there. Oh, I didn't mean to. No, I think he's been having internet issues. Oh, he's okay. Been, I was gonna say I didn't mean to be out. No. Yeah, Jimmy was frozen for a minute. Ah, yeah. Got it. Okay. I... You <laughs> there? He is. He's back. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, nope. Pastor Taylor, I think you called. Did you call and talk to Eric before on Talk Ethan? No, but I, I actually like that show better than the other one. I've watched a couple times. It seems it seems more mellow. <laughs> generally, generally, um, I'm usually in the studio. By the way, uh, but my roommate, Holy Kool Aid, is in there right now. I was just watching in my room, so I'm broadcasting from my bed on my laptop. So, <laughs> Holy anyway. Kool Aid's your roommate. That's you're, you're on nonstop I'm learning, learning aren't you? Then, <laughs> oh, dude, it's it's um, it's amazing when when you get all these content creators together. In one close space. Everyone's, you know, bouncing ideas off each other, helping each other film. Um, I actually uh, recorded a script for Genetically Modified Skeptic um, the other day, and it, it's it's nice because he lives, you know, just down the way. <laughs> uh, with, well, I mean, now that we're all locked away, it doesn't matter, but, you know. Yeah. So. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, Jimmy, I, I had a question for you, man. Yeah, go for it, man. Um, you were saying something about God going by different names, and I don't understand what you, what you meant. You were talking about the beginning of the universe and put out a bunch of, of, of different words that were all really fast, but I didn't understand what you were saying. I, I was trying to follow. I apologize. No, don't apologize. I apologize I, for going into the it's all good. What's up? Uh, you know, if I had a little bit of alcohol, maybe I could slow down, but <laughs> I'm trying, you know, uh, I try to stay away from that, man. Um, uh, what I was trying to say was that uh, I, it's this point that I brought up. I don't know if you're, you're probably familiar with Steve McRae. Uh, I, I brought it up on his channel a lot of times, man. Uh, uh, you know, if you believe in evolution, and I'm sure you believe in evolution, mm -hmm. then you understand that language only came about within the last about 10,000 years, according to our scholars. Correct? Actually, approximately, evolution, approximately, approximately. evolution doesn't have to do with linguistics. Evolution has to do well, with well, no, I'm, I'm talking about the evolution of language. I'm talking okay. about the first time the, the word <laughs> God was even coined. Do you know the etymology of the word God? I don't think it matters. The, oh, the, the, oh. The, the, it, so, so there, there's actually a fallacy there. Um, oh, no, no, no. You, you're not letting me finish, man. Like, hold on, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were going to go. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, well, when you look into the dictionary, what do you see? You see the, the term atheist means, you know, someone who doesn't believe in God. If you believe in evolution, the word God hasn't always existed forever. You know, before the word God came about, before human beings started uttering the word God, long before that, uh, Hinduism existed, and they were saying Brahman. And I don't know if you ever studied what, what Brahman means to the Hindu, to the Hindu mis the, to the Hindu yogi. Um, but but uh, uh, one second, man. So like uh, the Taoist sage recognized the same thing, but what he recognized is that you know it's never going to be, uh, it's never going to hold some name like. 
it, we act like God is going to be the internal, eternal name for this thing that we're arguing against. You know, the, the human species could be, we can get Corona, you know, wipe us half, half of us out. And then, you know, right. to the point where like the part of the species who doesn't remember that word, then we're going to de develop a different word for it. Jimmy, Do you get what I'm saying? You, you, I, well, you, you brought up a whole bunch of stuff back to back and I, I, I don't know. I apologize. Hold on. I apologize. No, that's okay. You're trying, <laughs> to, you're trying to express a concept. And while you're mm -hmm. doing it, you're, you're bringing up a bunch of stuff from the outside to support that idea. But along the way, I'm like, ooh, ooh, shiny, ooh, shiny. You know what I mean? <laughs> along the way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the way to... you see it, man. That's just the so, way you see it. Well, so. You know, I, uh, Eric, I, 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 I have called you. you. I, I've called you. Hold on, hold on. Hold, let, let, let Eric respond. Let Eric respond. Right. So, so, so um, well, well, first off, um, depending on what kind of Taoism you're in. Um, the only Taoism there is. That is not true. I, I studied Taoism for a serious amount of time. I heard that. <laughs> uh, but, but that's okay. okay. Um, because the, the, you, you can be an atheist and a Taoist. Um, if you say so. But, uh, but remember, you're confusing yourself with this. Yeah, we found it. Said. But, 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 but where, where I'm going with this is um, the way you're talking about linguistics, um, it, it sounds like you have this kind of prescriptivist approach. I'm not uh, talking about prescriptivism whatsoever. It's exactly well, it's Steve, Ar uh, Steve McRae's argument, man. Like Matt accuses him of, he's not talking about prescriptivism. I'm not talking, it's to, absolutely I'm absent. talking to you, Jimmy. Uh, no, I, I'm in agreement with this dude, man. I've been, always been in agreement with this dude. Like he's so, synonymous so, to my perspective. Record okay, it. So, so, so when you're talking about the definition of God and the etymology, mm -hmm. um, it doesn't really matter so much to me in as much as we are all understanding what we're talking about at the time that we're talking about it, right? So Yeah, it's pretty, I, but you're speaking provisionally. You're speaking provisionally. You got to recognize that. Why? Do you know what provisional means? Yes, but why 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 do I need what to does it mean? recognize that? Jimmy, what does provisional mean? Why <laughs> why? If I explain why, I'm going to explain what, what provisional means. I'm asking you. What does provisional mean in your own words? If you don't mind, please. Sure. Is, is this like a gotcha moment? No, no, no. It's not a gotcha moment, man. I just, I'm asking for an honest answer. I'm not criticizing you, brother. You know what I mean? Like, uh, I'm not coming in that spirit whatsoever. Sure. Okay? I'm so, just asking you an honest question. So uh, when, when something's provisional, I, I'm just mm -hmm. taking it colloquially, unless there's a, a sense of it that I'm not understanding. Um, mm -hmm. That it's it's. Um, I'm using it so long as it's useful, right? So long as it's useful and it's always subject to change. Yeah. You agree. Yeah. I guess then I completely missed your point, Jimmy. I that if if, if that's right. the case, then. You went right over yeah. my head. I, no, I, I, man. I, I, I guess it's it's, eight. It no, goes no, right no, over no, Matt Dillon's bald head, man. No offense to the guy, but no, that was it's actually, no, it's it's just Jimmy, boom, 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 boom. Jimmy, but that means that you've got more work to do as a communicator, learning how to communicate so that your audience. Maybe so, follow. man. Maybe so. Yes, I agree. so. I agree. I, 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 don't I, don't have, I promise you, I'm not a smart guy. If I'm your Democrat, I don't have a platform like you. Damn it, damn it. So this goes back to the Go Tao Te Ching. Hmm? So this goes back to the the first page of the Tao Te Ching where it says that the Tao that could be named is not the eternal Tao. The name that could be named is not the eternal name. And that's where we get this God, the etymology of God has the answer in the beginning of the universe and, and on and on and on and on and on. And on and on and on. Yeah, that's like Forever and ever. So the ACA is an underground drug cult. Recorded. Remember, Rick? Hold on, hold on, wait a second. So, hey, so we got a member of the atheist hey, community of Austin here. Yeah, he, I used to. Hey, be man. No, he, I'd like to. Oh, my God. You're blow him up, dude. What's going on? Hey, I, I want nothing to do with this. I want nothing to do with this. I'm well, out here. I mean, I mean, if it's a joke, that's fine. No, I, we have, a, we have me, and, me and Rick have an hour long video, and, and this. Oh, my God. Life. Hey, I'm out here. I'm out here, man. This came to light, and then I, I, I watched with my very eyes that, that Jenna here said that she was a volunteer. Yeah. So, so I, I, say, I I have to come to the conclusion now that there is no 
illicit drug money or you're not giving any to Jenna. <laughs> Dude, I, if, if only, if only. No, honestly, um, we're way too boring for that. To be, uh, no, none's going around. We're not even getting any money from like, uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, it's, it's, it's escaping me. The, the, the billionaire who's supposed to be funneling all the money to the lizard people. What's his name? Um, um, maybe I'll remember. I, anyway, yeah, we're so there's no nice again, man. Up until a couple of years ago, the AC was surviving on like three thousand dollars, three, num the number three thousand dollars budget for the year. Three thousand so, for the whole year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys what don't I, know how to sell drugs very well. Nah, apparently not. No, dude. <laughs> Well, so, so, I think so, I, I think this is a this is a, a a jab back at at us atheists saying, "Hey, why aren't y'all churches paying taxes?" I think this is their, their conspiracy back at us. Well, I, I, I mean, I mean, I, I say this in the nicest way possible because I, I adore you know the people who uh, who are still here and the people who left. Uh, that said, when I first got to the ACA, there was an argument going on for like four months about whether or not they were going to put a window air conditioning unit in the back room because it got really hot back there in the summer. Um, <laughs> and before that, I, I was I was told there was a legendary argument about buying a trash can. Um, so <laughs> it's 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 interesting hey, is it how, where how people see it, you know, globally versus how a lot of the people kind of at the building in the organization see it. Hey, nice Eric, I, there, is, there is one thing I want to tell you, dude. Your int the intro to Talk Heathen, the song, that's a fucking badass solo, dude. Where, where does that come from? That comes, so our producer, Mark, actually found it. Um, in So he was looking through um, you know, music that was available to be used commercially uh, oh, with a you know, free usage license. And it popped up, but he spent days looking for a good song, and he was so proud. I remember he was like, "Eric, Eric, you gotta check this out. I found the song." And yeah, not nah, it fit perfect. <laughs> hey, have you seen Have you seen the Broken? Um, uh, it's like the uh, uh, Kevin Rose. These like they're like these ha ha hackers, uh, underground hackers that were trying to like mainstream these like all these hacking techniques and stuff. And they use like a similar intro, dude. Like the way y'all like rush and stuff. I always thought that you got influenced by the broken. You never heard of the broken? I, I haven't. And thank you. People were saying in the in the chat. I didn't want to interrupt you, man. But George Soros, yeah. Not even George Soros. Uh, I, I I've talked to the heads of every atheist organization that I you know could get my hands on, and nobody has talked to George Soros. I wrote George Soros a letter. Is George Soros secretly funding you guys? I wish. I wish. I didn't even get a personalized response. It was a thank you for sending us an email. Uh, that was it. <laughs> so I'm, I'm uh, curious on why 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 you why you keep going back to is the ACA being funded? I mean, are there arguments that good that you have to pay for them? He's just trying to spread Illuminati conspiracy theories, man. <laughs> no, you started that. That, that was your that's what you started. You and Matt were talking oh. about that. First the Knights Templar came. Whoa, hold on, hold on. And hold then on. they evolved from there. I didn't say that the Illuminati wasn't involved. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> you can watch the video. Evolved for at least 2,000 years. <laughs> All right, so I think we were talking about the Bible at one point. I believe the Bible. I think no one believes the Bible. You believe I'm pretty the sure. Bible? I believe the Bible, so yes. Do, do you believe it, like, literally cover to cover? or? Yeah. So. Oh, literally. In the beginning, God stood upon the surface of the waters. Yeah. Where do the waters come from? The waters? <laughs> yeah. They're part of the void that was created. He created hey, the earth Pastor, in heaven. Pastor Peter. Well, no, no. He, he did that afterward. He didn't do that beforehand. And he created the earth that was formless and void, and the Spirit of God hovered above the waters. Okay, so so he created. Maybe yeah. I got to reread that, but I think he might be reading I have a question that. for you, Eric. Man. Yes, I'm a young earth creationist, yes. You're a young Earth creationist. Yeah. Ooh, did you know that uh, I'm going to be emceeing the uh, 
the Ark Encounter protest this year. <laughs> I spoke at the Ark Encounter protest last year as well. Uh, Eric, Eric. Thank you for that. I didn't really what he said. Hey, I have a question for you, man. Um, did you get to watch uh, the atheist experience with the Matt Delonte and Johnny this last Sunday? I didn't. I didn't. I caught the beginning of it, but not not uh, not the whole thing. Um, there's a recurring theme. Maybe you're familiar with it, man. Uh, that always comes up during these uh, debates and, and the calls, and they talk about um, the Damascus Road experience. Yeah. Are you familiar? Yeah, uh, Saul. Uh, walking yes. into Damascus, head scales over his eyes, the whole thing. Yeah. You know how Change the name uh, to Paul. a lot of callers call into the atheist experience saying, like, uh, they're constantly asking Matt, hey, have you tried DMT? Have you tried DMT? Um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, you, I, I've called you before, Eric, and uh, I, 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 I was on a call with you and V. La Bianca, and I asked you if you ever tried psychedelics, and you told me, that you had you had this shamanic setting, but you didn't take more than you, you were comfortable. I mean, you, you didn't want to go. You started off light, and you didn't want to go higher than you were comfortable with. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, the the point. Uh, I don't know if you follow the science relative to this, but what they're I, trying I, to I say. I don't know if science is a good word to use in this context. <laughs> Well, no, uh, I'm talking about like the the studies at Johns Hopkins uh, that I always I've called into the show, man, trying to mention this stuff. And, I, and I, I, I I do know actually I remember the Johns Hopkins claim because I looked it mm -hmm. up and that was false. That was bunk. That was not a thing. Well, I mean, uh, okay, it's one thing to just like declare it bunk. You have to explain the reason why, man. What they're doing at these uh, at this research uh, in, in, at Johns Hopkins University, what they're doing it, is it's not a, it's not at Johns Hopkins is what I'm saying. The, the, the study itself, um, mm -hmm. Johns Hopkins actually made put out a statement saying that we didn't do that, we're not doing that, and that's not us. So the, the study no, uh, you're citing is not a good study. No, no, I mean, no. The no. things I mean, you're saying there could is, be true there, still, but the study you're citing is not w uh, where... What you're saying is that there's no such studies taking place at Johns Hopkins. I disagree, man. Uh, uh, there's been They've been taking place since 99. Uh, double blind, double blind trials uh, where they give hey, people. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Eric yeah. just said that John had put a message out saying that he doesn't fuck with that shit. Hmm? I mean, right now is the time to be like, "Hey, where's that message at? Let me go look at that message." And then, if you see the message and it's from John himself, then that's when you change your mind. That's when you say, "Hey, maybe I was wrong about this." Uh, uh, well, what do you mean by John? I'm talking about a university, not a person. Yeah. Um, you know, like, uh, what, so, I, so, what I'm trying to get at so, is that what, really, what, are you, what are you saying that they studied? Uh, what I'm trying to get at is that they're using a high dose of psilocybin, a high psychedelic experience, and they're saying that it's it's mapping on to how mystics have described it throughout millennia that whether they engaged it through meditation or so forth, um, what they what they induce naturally is one and the same with what they're inducing with a high dose, a single high dose of a psychedelic, a single high dose. And what I'm trying to tell Eric is he's never done that. He's never done a single high dose. He's just admitted right now that he started off light, didn't want to go higher. And I, I, what I'm trying to say is when you go higher, then you enter the place where all the mystics are talking about, like uh, whether they got there through meditation, whether they got there through some kind of natural means, whether they got there through the near-death experience, so, so are you are so, you so putting generally. a number on how high it, when when Eric says he doesn't want to go no. go higher no, than no, what's no. comfortable for him? How, no, what, no, what no, not necessarily. Do you know? Well, well, he, he said uh, if he's talking about mushrooms, uh, a light dose is about half a gram to a gram to two grams. I don't know where where Eric ended up, Jimmy. But uh, can, can I can I respond to what? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Um. Oh crud! See, that's what happens. I hold on to it, and and then and then and then I lose. I it. apologize again. Ah! I didn't mean to ah! Ah! It'll come back to you, brother. Oh, 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 I got it! I got it! I got it! So, would you agree with me that when you're taking, you know, these shamanic doses doses of uh, of of these drugs, that you're messing with your brain chemistry? Uh, of course, but you're even doing that in okay. a so, setting. 
Well, hold on. So that's the point. Hold on. You know, like what are you doing? No, 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 no. You're equivocating. You are equivocating no, because I drink water. That is a chemical that does not send me to the moon. But you do realize that your own brain produces DMT, and the whole reason why psilocybin again, again, your brain. no. Hold on, you, you, you're taking five steps past. No, where, no, not at all. The, then hold on. Yeah, well, listen, hold on. listen to him. Okay. Listen to so, right, so, go ahead. Go ahead. So you're messing with your brain chemistry in a way that is mm. way outside of what regular brains do. Yes. Way, way outside. That's if, the point. First off, Jimmy, go ahead. when you're saying, you know, oh, the brain just does it too, you're equivocating. You know, oh, it just happens naturally. No, you're agreeing that it does not happen naturally. No, the experience that people are having there is because they're taking these massive doses of drugs, right? No, what, what I'm trying to tell you is that it potentially. Well, 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 well I, I, I get what you're trying to tell me, but I, I'm trying to make a point. Okay, and I'm trying ahead. to do it nicely. So, well, what, is, what, what is that point? Sure. Well, you keep is interrupting it him. You can't, you can't make his point. No, I'm, I'm trying to listen. Is it a good time to make judgments about what is true about the world when you are whacked out on drugs? Here's Should you be making decisions when you're in that state? Well, let, let me respond to that. Um, sure. they, the, the professionals that are involved in this research do not describe it that way at all, man. The way they interpret it is that our brain right now in our ordinary state of consciousness is actually filtering reality. Right now, we're filtering reality. There's things that you're not noticing. You know, like it's just in the background. You know, you're only conscious of, of what your ego is aware of, what you want to pay attention to, of me, me talking to you, and us understanding these ideas. You know, and um, what the psychedelics awaken you to is something that's already there. It's part of reality. It's embedded in reality, but it's it's they okay, well, consider it like a higher value in reality. What do you mean? I mean that what, like, what is embedded uh, in reality. Let, let, let's say let's say that you know you have an internet connection, right? You have a slow internet connection. Let's say 56K is our ordinary consciousness. And when you take psychedelics, you get broadband coming in to your brain. Okay. You understand consciousness corresponds to a, 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 a brain state, right? Of course. So, of course, man. I don't think I know that. Uh, like, I okay. follow this so, stuff so, probably deep, more deeply okay. than you do, my friend. So then you're using definitions and terms that don't mesh right if you if, like if you if so example um there is a discrete brain state for a thought right if i'm having a okay. thought there's a discrete brain state for that thought sure. um if i have my neurons firing rapidly all over the place um, yeah bad things happen like i could have a seizure right okay um yeah so if you're saying consciousness is like upgrading your internet when you're on these drugs that's just not how it works that's not how consciousness works I, 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 in the real world I think that, uh, even that metaphor is kind of weak man it's not even like exactly what what, what occurs like when um I, like see i wouldn't have to explain this if you were following the research you already think it's bunk Jimmy. you know well, no, so, you're misinterpreting. So, you're misinterpreting the research, Jimmy. Yeah. You, you, you're, no, 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 no. Oh, I'm, also, I'm Jimmy, not. You're, I've you're been following this for over ten years, my friend. I guarantee I'm not misinterpreting it, Jimmy. And, you're, you're, uh, you're you're attacking things that are off to the sides here. Let's 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 be direct. If if you're going to you know have, like directly approach an idea, okay. Then, let me put it this way. Don't, don't kick kick out the legs. Like let's 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 you know, yeah, yeah. talk about the idea. Let, let me let me put it this way, Eric. Matt Dillahunty himself has I'm admitted that he's there. I know you're not Matt. I know no. you're not Matt. Hey, okay. give me a chance to speak, man. Well, I, know I just you're not. don't like appeals to authority, man. I'm not right. appealing to authority, man. Okay. You're already assuming ahead. that. Um I'm not appealing I'm I'm a theist. Why would I what why would a theist appeal to an atheist for it? As an authority, can you answer me that? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. <laughs> because I've had lots and lots of theists call in, talk to me personally, okay. and 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 then they say, "Oh, well, you know what? This person that you should 
you as a leader, this person who you should okay. you as That's irrelevant, man. It's irrelevant to my point. It is relevant. Hold on, it is relevant because they'd say it's, re it's relevant you know, to your this point. This person said, "Go ahead." What I'm saying is, Matt has said that he's not tried DMT, that he's willing to do it, so that the people that keep on calling the show, "Hey, Matt, have you tried DMT?" Uh, yes, I have. He wants to be able to say that. But guess what? He's never done it. Neither have you, man. So, and so okay. That's, so I, that's so the fucking DMT, point I'm trying to get at. So, Jimmy, DMT, DMT, or whatever drug you want to talk, talk about, psilocybin, anything. <laughs> right, it adjusts. It, it modifies your perception of reality. Like, yeah, it's a narrative that people so, say. It's not why, that insight that you get inside so, of it. The problem I have is that you you're seeming to imply that there is something beyond a natural cause i mean i know i'm not saying I, it's mortal combat it's not there's a world beyond that's the that's the fucking straw man that atheists try to fucking pull was, like, i'm not no, talking no. about something that's not part of reality man i'm talking about reality that's that's what i'm trying to get okay I, I, sorry you suggesting a a reality that is not of natural composition then if you uh, obviously you don't follow the research neither does eric I've tried a to I, I, I'm not, you know, I brought it up to Matt Hunting, man. Like, I, I, we went over, like, yeah, yeah, no, okay, explain, explain, you're, you're explain speaking, your interpretation. You're not, explain your interpretation. You're not speaking to Matt Hunting okay. right now. You're speaking to Phil, who is a pharmacist. Yeah. Yes, okay. So, so, are so you when, suggesting in, that? In, in, in the research, uh, one of the most, you know, they'll, they'll list these six characteristics that are uh, definitive for what they call complete mystical experience. And of course, the, the major one is a, a sense of unity of all things. You know, right. uh, uh, another major one is a sense of, uh, it's a transcendent ex experience where in which the all past, all future collapse into the moment. And it's right. invariably described by these volunteers as beyond dimensionality, beyond right. language, beyond words. Uh, that's, what they're, what they're that's, saying, what they, that's what they interpret yes. it as, yes. Yes. So, uh, and, and I'm, uh, I'm suggesting that that is just how they're interpreting what they're feeling. Well, they, it's a, even it's, if you, it's a, it's even a, if you argue that, so. so, so, so let's, there are two options. Let's, let me just, let me put it that way. There are two options. It is either an, a, an interpretation of a modified brain state, you know, just yeah. like caffeine is like a stimulation, right? It feels different. Um, and are you trying to suggest that there is something more than the chemistry going on, that they're tapping into something What I'm that trying to suggest beyond? is that they're, they're no, uh, they consider this a biologically normal phenomenon in consciousness. It is biologically and, normal. And, if, you, if, you and, take and, a, if you take a drug, you will have a definitive pharmace pharmaceutical yes, effect. And, yes, of course. That should be. And if you, right, and if you readily meditate readily and you pray very intensely, you will also that have. should be readily recognized. Jimmy, but we are recognizing please, this. please stop interrupting. Him. I was trying to. But, when, but when, when it goes beyond, when they go beyond that, is here's the point that the atheists miss. Um, they're not describing a, um, an experience that's unique. It's not a placebo effect. They're describing. Ah, okay. Okay. Stop right there. So how how do themselves. you so how do you know it's unique? How do you know it's unique? Uh, no, and not no, I'm saying, I'm uh, saying it's not experience. unique. I'm saying it's not unique. I'm saying it's universal to this phenomenon itself. It's universal. It's something that we, it's a potential in us all. It's something okay. that each one so of us So we can all, I agree. We can, we can each modify our brains by taking a brain modifying drug. Mm -hmm. And we can have whatever feeling. I mean, it, dose dependent, and the whole yes. pharmacist and me saying that, and uh, that's fine. And, and there, uh, people who okay, are, are okay, really practiced, let me just finish my sentence. Go people ahead. that are really practiced at strong meditation can get to a different level of feeling than just sort of the average person can. Sure. And we can measure this. They, they've documented. I described it, a, you know, a half hour ago about how how we've they've described it. Yes. Um, but and what I was that, to tell there's, there, there's nothing unusual about that. There's okay, nothing what, peculiar. What I was trying to tell you is that the, yeah. that's the narrative when you read about this stuff. I, I, if I didn't experience this for that myself, I think I would have a very similar perspective to that you have. But what, what you're no missing is that, this, this is not uh, a narrative. So what are you? What are you uh, adding to? What are I you just, adding to the story? I I I one thing. Just one thing. Um, one another yeah. aspect. 
another one, one uh, Eric. One, guys, one, another, guys another, can, another, I, can I jump in real quick? Oh, 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 Peter, please, please, let me finish this Jimmy. one point. It's one no, point. Hold on. point. No, wait. Well, no, no, Peter, I'm Eric. I'm Jimmy. sitting here. You have been talking over every single person talking. Jimmy. Can, while other people are trying to get a word in edgewise, all it's been is other people, you talking over other people. I can't I can't sit in a conversation where all it is is you just waiting your turn to talk at us instead of I, I it, it's just not fun, man. At least it's not fun for me. You gotta stop. You gotta wait. And not just say go, 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 but just chill and let other people in the conversation talk. Um, so I, I jumped in. Uh I'm I'm not sure if if that's going to happen to uh, to, to the the whole thing, the chill thing. So, Eric, I have a question for you. Yep. Uh, this has been going on for quite a while. And uh, Jimmy earlier immediately wanted to tap out, which I think is really dishonest. I, I don't uh, think so. I think his internet no, cut out. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hold on. Hold okay. on. The whole thing about the ACA conspiracy being uh, a drugs ring. There are, two people, there are two people. There are two people in here. Who will, there are two people in here who will gladly make that claim if you're not around. And suddenly, when you're in here, they they don't want to talk about it. Do you think that that needs to be taken care of? Because I I'm, I'm an honest guy. I I don't like. The fact that people are talking behind your back, uh, accusing, accusing the ACA of being a criminal organization. Here, here, I, 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 I'd love to, to, um, dude. I get death threats. I get people who say they're going to come in to 1507 West Canning Lane with a chainsaw and hack my limbs off. Like I, I've gotten those messages. <laughs> Me when too. Comes, when it comes to people who say it, I mean I've, I've, I've made jokes about George Soros and the lizard people um, you know funding the ACA and I, I also I look at it and you know I see in the comments people saying oh you know Eric's dumb he's got a punchable face or oh he's you know this that the other thing I we all have that but I, yeah. I, I don't mind it I, I don't mind it I think that um, that people who want to you know, entertain those kinds of ideas I have have every right to but do I think that um, no I'm I, I don't care so, so my, my problem my problem with the whole thing is and I've been I've been watching ACA shows from um, pretty much the inception I think I watched every every atheist experience that is out there that I could oh, lay my right. hands on and I'm I'm subscribed I'm subscribed to uh, to AXP I'm subscribed to you and I'm subscribed to Truth Wanted. And to be fair, Truth Wanted I don't watch every single time. I do watch the other shows every single time. I I I like to watch the day after because then you've got a list of the guests, and I like to watch the theist guests obviously more than than others. Um, the fact that people are making claims like this, uh, and I agree with you, that that shouldn't be an issue. But if they are in the exact same room with you, and then the first reaction is, I'm going to leave, I don't want to talk about this, uh, that to me means that the people who are making this claim are aware that they're blatantly lying about people and now that they're, they're confronted all they want to do is run away and i don't think that that should be tolerated if if um, you have if you have a big mouth and you can gossip about people if you can accuse them of criminal behavior online on a regular basis and two of the people in here have done so uh then i think you should man up when you've got one of the people that you claim to be involved is actually in the room and make those allegations against them. It's either put up or shut up because I I hate stuff like this. I've been falsely accused online several times and I go against it vehemently. 
because if you got evidence, great, bring it. If not, then please shut up. Uh, I am. I. I. I I, I, I don't know, man. Um, but but I, I, I can settle it really quick, Jimmy. Just just any yes or no. Um, were you joking around, or were you serious about saying? That? No, I it, it was a joke. I, I think he's okay. going off on a rant. It was you, Jimmy, and both Pastor, you and I know this. Pastor Taylor, was, were, were you joking around, or were you serious? Yeah, I, that's. It, I, I, it, I was going to ask you. Hold on, hey. hold on, Jimmy. I was I was I was gonna ask you because I'm pretty sure you took it like I, like I was I, I perceived you took it with the grain of salt because I was asking you because it's it's it's, it's kind of Alex Jones pizza parlor ish. Sure, I I th my, my my only request is this: we're funding atheist groups all over that are doing good, you know, and what they've been able to do with that funding has been phenomenal in growing communities and in helping out people all over the place. And so I, I understand joking as long as it's all in good fun. And also as long as everybody knows that it's a joke, you know, that's, yeah, that's pretty much why I kept bringing it up. So, right, so, so, right. so please, if, if it is a joke, I just disagree. I, I just, and say, hey, we're just I'm, I'm pretty sure it's a joke. I'm pretty sure it's, it's, it's a joke because it started I, out with the Knights Templar and then it kind of evolved. I dis I disagree. I, with, whole story. I disagree <laughs> with both uh, Taylor and Jimmy right now. Uh, I've been trying to explain that uh, the ACA does fund a lot of uh, good causes with the money they get in. They're vocal about it. Uh, I, I think I they're open. Him. They're I, open I, about. I oh, hold on, Jimmy. Peter, hold on, Peter. Jimmy. I'm talking. I'm still talking. Peter, you're giving uh, serious. Like, hold on, Peter. I'm before you no, 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 you're giving, you're giving still, merit. Hold on. I'm still talking. I'm still talking. No, but come on. Peter, you're giving merit to something that's completely outlandish. Right? No one would think Graham would believe this. Story. Maybe, maybe it's completely outlandish, but when you told me, it doesn't even deserve Jimmy, merit. when you told me and when Jimmy told me, it wasn't a joke. So I don't was, hide was, don't hide behind that because that's not, not going that's to, why that's I just, not going to fly. I disagree with you. You're making it serious and, when it wasn't. Problem, it was obviously a joke. Problem, he didn't hold, on, it hold on, hold on, hold on. The problem that I have with this is the money that comes in in the ACA will go to a lot of good causes. They're helping people. They're helping people who are in need of help. If if only it is a Peter, joke, it is a bad joke. Peter, if I, there will be people. There will be people who take who take this seriously. Peter, if, 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 you, you, if you make my, it, no, no, they'll please, take it serious if you make it serious. Please, hey guys, just a, just a quick. Please, Peter, just, me, just one please, second. Please let me finish. I was just finish. thinking. No, James. Please, James, 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 James please finish. Just 10 seconds and then. Some, I, people, um, some people will not donate if they had get the same impression that I got. And I got the impression that the both one, you yeah. and Jimmy are serious about this. And this just needs to stop. If it's joke, then find another joke. No, I so, one you yeah, misrepresented me as talking behind his back. I said point blank to him, "Hey, so does Jim get some of this money?" I was clearly, and he he responded too, like it's clearly not serious until someone like you makes it serious. No, I've asked you both if you were serious. Hey guys, guys, just, just a were. quick guys, this is kind of going. Hey guys, this is, this is going really really bad. Just hold on one second, please. Yeah, it's just, going really really south. So. We've all established that it was something stupid. They were trying to make a joke. It got blown out of proportion. But I think we should give Eric a chance to talk about atheists helping the homeless. Exactly. Um, the building the ramp projects that they used to do. And I think I was gonna mention we owe it. I'll let Eric do it. Because, uh, yeah, let Eric do it. We owe Eric because he's the he's the on the the end of the stick. Only anything. We owe it that, to Eric to let him do it. No, that, that, was, that, so that was that was exactly James. What I was getting to, I was was I wanted to ask, I so wanted to ask from, Eric. Eric, where does the money go to? Can you name a couple of things where the money is going to? Absolutely, um, atheists helping the homeless. Um, uh, the ACA partnered up with the Beyond Belief Network, and the Beyond Belief Network. You know, you've got Foundation Beyond Belief and, and all of that. Uh, the ACA also supports uh, recovering from religion 
and uh, the other things that uh, Daryl's got going on. Uh, actually, the Secular Sexuality Show came from that partnership. Uh, it was Daryl's program originally. Um, mm -hmm. And then as far as other things in the community, I know that uh, the that various board members have been working on and, and seeking out other organizations to help support. Um, and I'm really proud of it. But that said, I'm just a volunteer. I'm not a board member. I'm not an employee. So I can't speak on behalf of the ACA, but I do want to say from the bottom of my heart, um, the, it's, it's, it's very sweet. And um, I, I, I just worry that I don't want to take on the role of, you know, representing them when I don't work for them anymore. I did. Um, that, and, and I'm, I'm going, and it's something that as long as I draw breath, I'm going to want to support because I, I strongly agree with the mission. I think that what they're doing is incredible, which is why I'm going to keep doing talk Eden and hopefully helping get that to, to good places. Um, but that said, um, I think I'm probably going to go to bed. Um, but lots of love, uh, Peter, it was good talking to you again, man. James, uh, we will talk. In the future, I'm sure. Uh, Phil, dude, nice I was just watching you handle stuff earlier, man, and and it was fun <laughs> listening. Jimmy and Taylor, oh, he's, he's going. Thank uh, you. you guys. Uh, yeah, I'll call on your show this Sunday. I've been yeah. putting it off. Rock on, brother. Um, we'll, we'll talk about the Bible. Sounds good. That sounds like a plan. Hey, um, you got a good show here, man. I'm trying to. I know. I don't like when it gets heated like it just did a minute ago. But no. yeah, no, I, and I'm I'm sorry if I had anything to do with things getting heated. No, you get you get no no no. no, no. Peter, you made that you, shit all tear drawn and Eric, emotional. Eric, Eric, you, Eric, I was laughing when I told him that. that. The fact he, that things he, get he heated it. It, uh, was was totally on to me and to someone who runs the channel that we're actually streaming on uh, at, at at this moment. Um and, and yeah, there's, so, there's some type of miscommunication because I'm hearing communication from from them that's different from what I heard before. So I'm trying to hash that out right now. Okay. okay. Yeah. Well, I, I I just again want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for inviting me. And dude, it it, it is hurting cats every time this conversation comes up. So the fact that you keep <laughs> uh, speaks volumes that's about your character, brother. And I wish you the best, man. I, I, I like I like to reference. I really like to reference. Thank you very so, much, Eric. Keep up the good work, and uh, yeah. So, um, whenever you get the opportunity on air, uh, tell people uh, what's been done with the money, the good things, because I think people need to hear and would love to hear what you guys are doing, uh, other than just putting up great shows. You know what? For, for the atheist and the theist community. Well, and 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 really, honestly, right now, I don't know what's going on because with coronavirus, it's not like we're out, you know, physically doing stuff. Or at least I'm not out physically doing stuff, and so um, I don't know what's going on. But how about I I, I reach out to uh, I reach out to Vern, and he'll probably give me some good info. And um, yeah, I'll be happy to get that out there. All right, bye everybody. Okay, right, take care, Talk to you later. See you later. Bye. Thanks for coming. Thank so, you, James, too, for uh, just for again, your, again, your Justin. My my apologies that I that I butted in. No, but no, no. It, it, it it's cool. I I was wanting to, I was wanting to say the same thing, maybe in a little bit of a different way. But I at first I thought they were serious, and then when Pastor Taylor had made the joke to Eric, like, does somebody get some of the money? I, I personally saw it as a joke, but that doesn't mean that somebody else is going to see it as a joke. So I'm glad and it got brought up. I'm glad it got hashed and out. And exactly and, and now exactly have, that and exactly that is my yeah Peter, exactly have, that was that was my problem because um, you can say it's a joke. The way it was presented when I heard it, uh, it wasn't presented as a joke. Because I literally asked, is, 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 is this now an actual conspiracy theory? And both Did you see the video, Peter? Can we move on? And, and, and it doesn't just, matter. It um, doesn't matter. Hey, it let's, doesn't even I think, matter. If I, think, I, think, I think I agree James, with you. James, wait. James, wait. wait. No, we should, it move, we should move past this, though. It's a joke. It doesn't I mean, matter. I'm, I'm just thinking, so like, 
I don't mean to be rude. Wait for him to accuse me of more shit. I don't mean to be rude, but I think we made all the points on this about five minutes ago. And then yeah, I, I also agree. feel bad for Justin because it's the second after show and the mystery man that I don't know exists who owns this channel is now telling Justin who's trying to bring attention to his channel how to do his show. And I'm I'm completely thinking those conversations no. should be private and never should be streamed. That That's, should be a message to Justin and that should be not, like uh, like you want to, this because this is I like the concept of all these different shows streaming on this one platform for an after show and a way to like draw eyes to all the platforms. But when you have like these random times, they just come off as like little bitty infighting. And I think it kills the community value. I, I agree with you on that, but I want to get back to the point that we were talking about. And that is that even if it's a joke, if it is brought on air, in a way where More some people could, could think that it's not a joke and people are being serious, people will stop donating and less money will go to homeless wow. people, as, as you heard. Less <laughs> money will go to other good causes. So Peter, Peter. If, you, if you really want to joke, if you really want to joke, joke about something different. Hey, not Peter, about something, not about something, not about something. Not about something. We've waited long enough to something. ask Peter. Can How I, many people I took please, it seriously besides you? Finish, can I please finish my sentence be, be, before? No, finish, 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 finish. Paragraph, man. Look, dude, sentences or yeah. paragraphs are completely different. Yeah, I, mean, I, know it it hurts. Hurts. I know it hurts to hear this, and I know that you feel guilty and you think you need to defend yourself, but do that later. No, but you, you came in off the bat sideways saying that yeah. I, I, I was talking behind his back. When I talked to him point, point blank about it, and he, he took it the way it should have been taken, outlandish and silly. You're the only one out of everyone here that took it seriously and thought, that's oh, well, you, I'm compelled to make an emotional speech about it. So that's what you say now. That's what actually happened. That's not what I said now. That's not what you told me last time. Let's just be clear about that. I've been talking. I showed that's, you the video. That's, that's, also, that's also not what Jimmy said. And the fact that Jimmy immediately wanted to run when the topic was raised <laughs> To me, is, is I was joking around, time. man, because I didn't take it as seriously as you did. You're the one that's prolonging it. I, I mean, well, uh, but, in fact, in fact, in fact the case, it case already said, "Hey, this is squash, yeah. man. Forget about it. Done. If Let's you, talk about something say, more." Immediate. I love you, Peter, but you're crazy. If you say yeah. things, if you say things on, online, man. get over it, Jimmy. If you say Go. things online, you need to take the consequences. Yes, and I mean, that's what we said. That's why we squashed it. We realized it was a joke. Let's move on. We realize it was a joke. It was one. That's that's what empathetic. Uh, that's what he said. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still not convinced, but maybe I will be. Okay, okay, but you're you're prolonging it, man. You're you're, you're because because it because it is hurting a good <laughs> okay. cause. Right, okay, I accept it. Okay, let's go. Hey, hey, so, so we're gonna end we're gonna end this on the note that <laughs> some people took it as a joke, some people didn't, and we have on camera on live channel. Both of both Pastor and Jimmy saying that it was a joke. So if anybody has any questions in the future, we can bring this video up saying, "Hey, we weren't serious about it." Uh, yeah, and, and, and I have a video where this conspiracy was born. I can share with everybody. I don't. I don't want that video to be spread amongst it's it's almost as if you keep saying it over and over again to somebody else i don't want that video to come about you know on my channel if you if, yeah, i mean i can't control you and, and tell you what to do on your channel but i i don't i don't want i don't want that that video even being linked in my channel. i don't want to either i, I respect you, man. I, I, I don't want to associate your channel with anything like that man so i i don't want to be a, so that's why i got up man i wasn't I mean, it was a joke, but man, I don't want to be associated with that. You know, like uh, uh, Jenna, like you said, she came on. Uh, if I if I if I may mention her amongst this chaos, uh, a woman, uh, she came on with such uh, compassion about the the community that's growing inside atheism. You know, and and I respect that. I totally respect that. And I, I think it's a it's a complete you know. Um, 
misnomer to, to, to dive into this nonsense that Peter's talking about. Because, I, I mean, yeah, we, I, 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 it should be mentioned, like you said. And you said, you even said yourself, oh, I'm glad it was brought up. I'm glad it was brought mm -hmm. up. We got to watch it. Let's get over it. Let's move on. Let's, go, let's get on to some better content. You know, that, yeah, and that's why I, mean, I respect I, your channel. That's why I, I respect your channel. That's why I came here. I, I didn't come here to hear a rant from Peter. I, like, I agree. Oh, I agree. So if we all agree, I think we should move on and it shouldn't be mentioned again. Thank you. That's that's it. Yeah, I'd actually I'd actually like to bring uh I'd like to bring Noah in because he hasn't said much and he is a theist who's literally in Bible school right now. So I'd I'd kind of like to hear some stuff that he has to say too because he's kind of just sitting in the background. I'll I'll give my I'll give my spot back to uh to Noah, Justin. No problem. If you need a if you need a spot. Because okay, I, anybody that wants I, I just, to I just asked I just asked Noah if I, if I could take his place for just a second because I wanted to have this out and I wanted to make sure that we, we all stand on on what, where we stand on all of this so uh, I'm, I'm more than happy to 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 get back out okay thank you very much Peter thanks for for coming in and, and taking care of this. And and you know put putting your opinion out there and I, I respect it. I'm on your side with it. I just I, I don't I don't want this to be the turn into a shit show because of it. No, no, and it and it shouldn't and it shouldn't and that's why why we should move on and that's why I'm going to hop out again and and let you guys do the show. Okay, cool. Thank so, you very much, Peter. Catch you all later. Bye bye. All right. All right. Noah, you're back. All right. So now <laughs> I can say I know a guy. Yeah, I get it all the time. I'm looking for that one. So, Noah, have you built an arc recently? Uh, no, I have not. <laughs> I get that one all the have time. You, have you made a vineyard and gotten drunk recently? <laughs> no. Try to avoid that if all possible. <laughs> so, so where are you right now? With So you're in... in Bible college is, is what I think you called it. Mm -hmm. So do you guys go from cover to cover or do you skip around or like, are you, how do you, how, how do you, how's Bible college go? So um, the school I go to is not necessarily like Bible college. We have a ministerial program, but uh, it is a Christian college. So everybody has to go through at least the whole Bible once. So freshman year, we have to go through the entire New Testament and break it up into the Gospels and Acts for the first semester, and then the rest of the New Testament for um, the second semester. And then second year, you do Old Testament. And I just finished that this year. And then ministerial guys take um, like book-specific classes. It depends on what your major is. But typically, you go through, I'd say, half, half the books of the Bible, like just a single class. So first and second Corinthians we put together as one, um, some minor prophets. But uh yeah, we, we go through the whole Bible. Do you guys do the Apocrypha? No. No. Okay. What are your thoughts on that? Um I don't think it's canon. I haven't actually read it. I'm familiar with it a little bit, but I've never actually read any of them. And I've heard some arguments why it should be canon, but I'm not really familiar with it to be honest. Were you always a Christian? Uh, since I was four, yeah. I was raised in a Christian home, though. Mm. Baptist, Protestant, and Methodist. Baptist, yeah. Do you, do you think that your upbringing has anything to do with the faith that you have? Definitely. Um, I, I made it my own, like, mid-teens. Um, obviously, <laughs> when you grow up with it, you don't really get much of a choice. But... Um, I, I was interested to learn more, and so I started studying um, other religions and seeing what I believed and seeing what other people believed and kind of comparing and seeing if what we really held up, and I kind of made it my own about 13, 14, and uh, ever since then, I've been kind of on the road to going into ministry, and so I really want to make sure that I know what I believe and have a, a better skill at communicating with people who don't believe the same as me and learning from other people as well. Okay. Wow, man. Appreciate it. So are you are you a young earth or old, old earth? Young earth. 
So you're young Earth. So how old do you think the Earth or the world is actually the universe? Six thousand years. Okay. And how did you come to that conclusion? Is this strictly just out of the Bible? Yeah. Um, I've seen again like the uh, like some scientific proofs, but I think that may be just. Uh, um, it depends on your interpretation of the facts. Like we can all get the same facts and come to different conclusions, obviously. So I'm not, again, super familiar with all the arguments for, for old Earth or even just um, normal evolution. I've studied a little bit, but not a lot. Hey, Noah, you mind if, uh, are you familiar with the comedian Bill Hicks? No, I'm not. Uh, man, he, he's a com- uh, he's he, he makes uh, content towards young earth creationism and i don't know man it may open your mind man he's not necessarily he's not an atheist you know mm-hmm. he's in god but he's trying to get you to to think about it in a in a different way different light you know uh mm-hmm. his name is bill hicks uh look up um bill hicks uh youtube bill hicks dinosaurs okay That's like it one of his most famous skits uh regarding this topic I got a question for you from the chat, Noah. All right. Noah, have you found a coherent or accurate descriptions of a God? If so, could you expound on what those descriptions are? Um, all the descriptions of God that I would get would come again strictly from the Bible. And um, it's kind of hard to describe because the Bible says he's a spirit. He doesn't have a physical body. So I'm not exactly sure what you're looking for exactly in that question a physical description so when, when you say that he doesn't have a physical body mm-hmm. uh what do you think it meant when in genesis when it said that god walks walked through the garden with adam um i think that's what we call a theophany like it's an appearance of jesus before jesus was actually on earth um it happens again with abraham and the two angels that come at sodom and gomorrah and you know, there's a couple other places I can't think of them off the top of my head. Okay. And even before that, and these are just questions that I had when I was was studying. I was about to do exactly what you're doing right now. Um, mm-hmm. And I wanted to d- dive into the Bible. So maybe when I got there and I, and I was trying to, you know, become a preacher, when I got to school, that I would already have, you know, a step up on everybody else and, and, already understand things a lot better Mm -hmm. Uh, and basically bible bible college would be or seminaries would be that much easier for me to go through so if god created the universe creation is an action would you agree with that yes and an action requires time and god created time that means that god must have time before he can create it, but he lives outside of space and time. It it's a jumbled mess in my head as to mm. understand how God created time before he had time because creation requires time. Right. I've kind of been looking into that recently because I've, like you said, lived outside of time. And uh, I was always taught growing up, like God, um, even in heaven is outside of time. But then you look at revelation and there's like, um, blanks of time for 30 minutes after uh, I opened some seals and variance references to time in heaven. So I think he lives inside of time now, but I don't really know how to, I, I can't get my brain around that either because I feel like it's something that we can't understand. We have finite minds. And so there's things that we're just not going to understand until we're not in physical forms anymore. So I guess that's mm-hmm. not the answer to that. But you you believe it happened, correct? Yes. How would so you just you just said that you don't understand? Why would you believe something that you don't understand? Hold on, he, he's mean. speaking. <coughs> oh, oh, I I wanted to add, man. He's speaking from his uh, intellect and trying to understand it. Um, the the mystics who wrote the scripture that he's reading are speaking from direct experience. And so when they say Somebody outside, directly experience God creating the universe, well, no, 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 no. that's a misconception. You see, you're adding your own, you're reading into the text, like you're adding your no, own. No, 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 no. To 
if it if you you just said that somebody this is their direct experience. Yes. If, if a human wrote the Bible, the human would have to, the author of that book would have to have to directly experience the actions being written down in scripture. Yes, yes, and and that's what happens at the height of the experience. Like uh, in other words, like uh, uh, I don't know if you've heard of this term, divine hiddenness. Um, yes, I have a you, podcast episode all about it. Um, if God was revealed into you, all mystery would be sucked out of life. You'd be closely bored in, in knowing all things. Like in other words, like if you take this idea to its extreme, there would be no reason for me to speak to you right now. Why? Because you would know everything I was going to say. You know, there would be no. I'm sorry, there'd be no reason. Did you, say that, did you say we would know all things? Me? Yeah. In other words, like all, all possibilities. Uh, yes. No, do you believe that we'll know all things in heaven? Um, no, 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 that's a misconception. You see, like you're trying to project, like, no, I'm not talking about a heaven. I'm, I'm talking about that when, when mystics enter in, like meditation, or the uh, the Buddha gets nirvana, or uh, the mystic uh, gets the well. Hold the, on, just a, just a quick pause, or, but the mystic road experience would be like a revelation. Nirvana would be. Uh, a revelation of one non-existing, like yes. you would literally so it, cease to be. Yes, good point. I love that you brought that up, man, because these these experiences occur on a spectrum, and on these lighter spectrums, people do see these like placebo kind of effects. Like if you're a devout Christian, you may see Christ on the cross. If you're a devout Muslim, you may see Muhammad. You know, and so yeah, forth. I, I, I wasn't necessarily religious, and I saw Bill Hicks. You know, like in other words, it doesn't necessarily have to relate to something religious. It's something that's your mind's going to show you imagery that's that's perfect to your situation. So I know Noah, Jimmy talks about using drugs as a means to connect to God or Nirvana. But yes. I, I've, not, I've not heard very many Christians who would promote drugs. Yeah. What are your thoughts on it, Noah? So I, I have a question for you, Jimmy. I'll answer that in just a second. Do you believe that all religious experiences um, can be are just like a um, psychedelic experience? Or oh, no, no. I was not? trying to explain to them that it's not exclusive to the psychedelic. A lot of ma people make that mistake. And uh, what I was trying, Eric, a man, a real famous atheist, was on the show right now. And like, uh, you know, but the, the point I was trying to tell him is that in these high dose psychedelic experiences, they're comparing them. To, to these natural experiences and these religious mystics. Like, in other words, Jesus, when he said, I'm gonna go spend time with the father, he didn't mean that he's gonna go spend time with his dad and he's gonna go through a frisbee with his dad. He meant he was gonna go into contemplation. And the father was the, a term that the mystics used to refer to the highest mystical vision. You know, like, uh, uh, it's one of the same in all people. It's it's not something unique to your personality. And even the science, the science shows this. It's like people are describing things that are beyond their personality, beyond their personal history, and, and so forth. And 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 the, the thing is, people don't realize that it, they occur on a spectrum. At the highest point, it's beyond language, it's beyond anything you can think of. But as you approach it, it can be very relation uh, relational to you. Like uh, like you know, like if you're like I said, if you're a devout Christian, you might see Christ. Or like I said, I, I wasn't necessarily religious. I saw Bill Hicks. It is, doesn't necessarily have to be religious. But the point is that um, beyond all that, there is a break between the subject-object economy. You're no longer relating to something. You're no longer worshiping something that's outside yourself. That has collapsed into the moment. It's fused for the mystic, all time and all past and future, boom, pounce into the, to the present moment. They don't know time as we do. That's, they, they don't uh, identify with the material body or, or the ego anymore. You know, they, they see themselves as all things in every universe, every time, every time, every place, everywhere, all at once. Uh, you know, like, they, they that's what they identify as. They no longer identify as the material body. They, they're, in other words, complete reality. And that's why when people have this experience, they describe it as, like, the ultimate truth, ultimate reality. It's the most real thing they could ever experience. This is what Dr. Rich Rossman said in his studies. Every single volunteer without fail were saying, like, it, it was more real than the reality they know. That when they come back to this, it seems like the dream. 
and everyone's trying to realize this and and and, and it's permeated this is the point i was going to bring up to eric but he shut me the fuck up and uh, muted hold me. on wait just i was going to say eric, it's, it's wait, permeated Jimmy, with Jimmy. infinite unconditional love infinite Jimmy, we unconditional just, fucking love i don't mean and to cut you off me up. dude Jimmy, Jimmy, I, I don't mean to. I don't mean to. It's taken out of the equation. Jimmy, no, Jimmy, we just had a request. Jimmy, hang on a second, buddy, please. We had a request from the chat that let's let's leave Eric alone because Eric's not on to defend himself and anything. So yeah, yeah, I mean that would be being equated to a straw man argument, and that wasn't Eric that was muting you. That was me. That also misses the point that I just said. But I would like to hear Noah's response to what you said. But let's please not address Eric when he's All not right. here. <laughs> I respect you. Hey, Could you ask your hey, question hey, again? I love your moderating. Hey, I love what you, I love your dialogue. I love what you brought to the table, brother. Uh, I I really I would love to have a one on one with you, dude. I love the thing, uh, man. I really I really like uh, your content, man. Uh, do you have a channel? <laughs> Shit, uh, I would definitely pay attention to it. So my question was. Um, Jimmy in his Christianity equates a lot of drugs to the experience and the connectivity to God and other ways to take you to that level. My thought was, what was your take on that branch of Christianity or that thought process? Um, I, I personally don't agree with it because I try, I take a literal approach to the Bible, not quite like Pastor Taylor. Um, I room for some uh, figurative language, I guess is the best way to put it. But um, uh, most of what I would say, uh, religious experience comes purely from what is said in the text and how to achieve it based on what the Bible says. So prayer, talking to God is the only way in my mind that you can talk to him. I don't think that you can just take drugs and have that same experience. It may do some th same things in the brain. But I, again, I'm not familiar with that. So, so you're saying more of a, a clear mind, more focused yeah. in on God and through prayer. And do you do meditation? I do not. No. I do, by the way. Are you on this or? I'm sorry. Are you King what James? You say about King James preferred. Yeah. All right. Yeah, me too. What's your what's your second? What what's your second favorite? Um, I say King James preferred just because I'm open to other versions. I I I do solely use KJV, but like Spanish people shouldn't be using KJV. <laughs> the talking to God thing is an odd problem because I mean, people people will 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 talk or pray or whatever, and then if they don't get a feeling or uh, an answer back, quote unquote, not quite that literally, but you know, it's like you're not trying hard enough, and then you so you get into that cycle of convincing yourself eventually, or you or you don't, and that's when you start to doubt doubt the existence. You know, I I I, I would suggest that when you get into those moments, I mean, if you're after if you're really interested in figuring out what's true. And what's real you have to leave all options on the table mm -hmm. okay you have to leave the god hypothesis on the table you have to leave the non-existence hypothesis on the table and you know the 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 not getting an answer is it god is it my own thoughts i mean i've met people that literally think their own thoughts are from god and obviously that's the, a little too far mm -hmm. but but um you know you don't want to spend your life just chasing this spinning wheel that that uh, is not there i mean people have been studying the bible for thousands and thousands of years asking the same questions and maybe it's because there's really nothing there so hey phil have you ever thought of meditation as the cessation of thoughts cessation sure. of volition itself yeah i mean that's one type of meditation sure have you ever tried it yeah it's very really uh, it's. I mean, I'm not. I haven't done it enough to be good at it. But I mean, it's. I. Uh, it's a That's relaxing. A it's. It's a. It's a relaxing thing to do. Yeah. And I've. If I've you meditated. could put it off, man. If you, my theory is, that's, if you could pull that off, God. you would have DM, a DMT experience. Yeah, see, that's that's a problem. It's like <laughs> you know, if only it's you felt what I what I what I'm feeling. No, <laughs> the, the 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 idea that if if only you felt what I'm feeling kind of thing, it does it doesn't work. I mean, we, we know that person to person. 
Say again? See, that's different from person to person. Right, right, yeah. And well, it, that's why that's why the problem of experience is only it's only good for the person who feels it. So you just kind of you kind of have to let it set. It's like, okay, you had this experience, and along with your experience is your perception of the experience. So you know, who is somebody else to come along and say that you didn't have that perception? Now we can talk about what you know, trying to interpret it and what really might have happened, but nobody's going to take the the feeling away from you. I, you know, I can think I that think it could be neurological. You can think it could be spiritual sure. from from an alien the next universe and, over, and, and we'll have that, that we'll have that discussion. I think Phil opened up a really good point. I was just, I think this might be a great question with, and Phil might have a follow up. But what do you Christians do at the point where you have doubt or you don't hear from God or where you feel from you hear from God for extended periods of time? Um, what do you do in those times of uncertainty? Um, Bible reading is typically what we prescribe. Maybe that's not a good word, but um, a lot of the time the, the lack of communication from God comes from not being um, alive with scripture. And so then reading the scripture and then continually reading God's promises, a lot of time the answer will be there or getting your, um, your conscious realigned. With what is the Bible said is true or doing what God says. Typically that gets that sorry. communication back. Can you, I'm sorry, I interrupted you there. Can you just uh, define what you mean by getting your conscious realigned? That's a very odd phrase. So, um, I don't know if all Christians believe this, but for me personally, um, I believe that our consciousness is what God gives us, like our moral compass, if you will, and that that can get messed up, and that Christians, not Christians, people in general are depraved, um, so they're not like God. And the way to have your conscience realigned to actually be correct as it was originally is to read God's word. Have you have. ever have you have you ever felt that you were depraved? Yes, still do. Is it? I don't want to get too personal here, but I mean, is it something that you would think that an average person would have normal feelings of that nature? I mean. You know, it's not like you felt like suddenly turning around and cutting the arm off of the guy next to you or something like that, I'm assuming. No, no, no. Because, no. I mean, um, the, the, you know. God. I, was, uh, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've, I've had people tell me that they've had depraved thoughts when they, you know, because they looked at Playboy or something or nobody does that anymore. That's my generation. Sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> and it's, you know, it's just normal biology. Um, you know, we're all just we're all just normal people. I mean, we well, we can put Ours aside is more streaming service now. Yeah, PM us later. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, including when starting when you're nine years old, <laughs> you got that access. But uh, no, I'm losing my track of thought now. So, what is your definition of depraved? Depraved? Yeah. I I would say depraved is is a strong enough word to imply um uh, psychological pathology which means psychopathy um psychopath okay and and i'll uh, let me back that up one 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 level uh, a sociopath is somebody who is taught uh, and practices behaviors that are sort of not commonly acceptable in society mm -hmm. Uh, a psychopath is somebody who has like no empathy and and you know that can harm other people without feeling and things like that. So you know, talking to pretty much anybody, I seriously doubt that that um, any anybody has experienced depravity. I mean, other than saying, other than knowing that about one percent of the the population is are psychopaths uh, mm -hmm. in a psychological definition. Okay, so when I have to pray, I mean, like, uh, unlike God, so sinful, and so you've fallen from the nature of God. I don't mean it in that sense. Okay, that, so, that's, that so that's that's important because, I mean, first off, you're using a definition of what other people are telling you God 
is or should be like. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh, God is, I mean, we can even take the God of the Old Testament. That is, that is not a particularly depraved person. That is a vengeful person. That is a kind person at times. He's a little incons inconsistent in his, well, maybe he's schizophrenic, but, uh, but I mean, you know, generally speaking, well, I don't know. He does tell people to go commit genocide at times. So, hmm. uh, but that's not what you're, you're referring to. I, I mean, maybe you can describe it a little bit more. What do you, what do you think that you're doing that would be not like him? What do you want to do that's more like, that you would feel would be more like the behavior that is expected of you according to what they're teaching you? Um, lots of things. Cause, well, let's just take Old Testament law, for example. I don't think the Christians are bound to that necessarily. We don't have to um, abstain from pork and stuff like that. But like the moral laws, so saying lying, everybody's lied. And a lot of time we do it um, unintentionally, you lie to yourself and you convince yourselves that you are something other than you are. And um, in terms of not being a liar. Right, right. So that, that's one example, or um, uh, I'm trying to think something off the top of my head. Just being more like what the God in the Bible is, just being more like Him, and um, I mean, trying to kill people or anything. <laughs> but, well, I would suggest you don't want to be more like the God of the Bible in <laughs> the Old Testament. I mean, taking lying, for example. Uh, I don't want to. I don't want to say everybody lies uh, in a very broad sense. I mean, we do in a small sense and then you know we're all kind of imperfect but we're not damaged if you will right mm -hmm. lying in society is a normal piece of how we interact with people right it's like mm -hmm. sort of like in game theory where you've got a, a bunch of people you put them together they interact in various ways some people cooperate some people don't some people cheat some people don't other people part punish the ones who do cheat and that causes them to hopefully pull back unless they're the psychopaths in which case they don't so you know if if you're where did where does your desire to not lie come from reading the bible and con uh, conviction honestly which when i think were you, when did you start being a christian when i was four four mm -hmm. four so it's always it's always been with you pretty much yeah when did you, well, that's before you could read, right? No, I couldn't read. You could read at four? Mm -hmm. Good for you. Wow. Smart guy. <laughs> um, I was able to right. read at 14. Yeah. <laughs> I don't remember when I started to read. Uh, well, I'm just, I, I'm, I just want to suggest that, you know, maybe the line... The, the desire to not to lie doesn't come from the Bible. Maybe it just comes from what's wrong with just wanting to be a good person. Well, mm -hmm. here's, here's my question when it pertains to lying. And this question is kind of for Noah. D Noah, do you think that lying is always a immoral or bad thing? And see, that's where you get into sticky situations. <laughs> I would have to say, well, I mean, for, for example, if, if, if some, if you're standing outside and some some girl, and I just heard this the other day, and it was like, wow, this is a really good example. Um, but a girl tattered up clothes and whatnot, blood all over her, goes running past you down the street. Mm -hmm. And there's some guy 30 seconds later walking up the street. He's got blood all over him, but his clothes aren't torn. He's not, he's not messed up at all, and he's got an axe in his hand. And he says, hey, did you see a girl run past here? Would it be a good thing or a bad thing to be like, no, I haven't seen nobody? That would be a lot. I think that you can withhold truth without lying. Wouldn't that be bearing false witness, though? Maybe. I mean, I'm not in that situation. I don't know what I would do in that situation. But I do think it is possible to answer honestly without necessarily giving up any information that would be harmful to others. Isn't that a bit of a dodge? I mean, I mean maybe we're not what coming up with one, but couldn't you? Couldn't you sort of Would think of like that there might be a, a scenario where in Nazi Germany? And that's, I, I, I don't know because I, I don't know in that situation. Like, I'm, like I'm just Nazi trying to Germany get to the bottom of coming to your God house. being eternal and unchanging. And if mm -hmm. God is et 
eternal and unchanging, and he's already set the rules and set the commandments. And a lying tongue and uh, and bearing false witness is one of the seven things that God hates. And me and Pastor Taylor just went over this the other night. Um, those are one of the things that seven seven things that God hates. It's not. There's no situational basis with inside of the Bible that says. Hey, this is the right time to do this. This is the wrong time to do it. It's just objectively hated by God, no right. matter no matter what. If you if you if you lie out of your mouth to somebody else, regardless of the situation, then it's wrong and God hates it. Mm -hmm. But I I believe that that would be morally repulsive of God to be mad at somebody and to say that somebody sinned, helping try and save a girl's life and trying. Or get away from a madman. Mm -hmm. Would it would it be a lie though if Nazis are in your home? They're like, where are the the Jewish people? You know that they're in your home, but you don't know where exactly they are in your home. But you say, I don't know. You're not lying directly, but you're giving a truth that you don't actually know where they are within the position of your home. The right answer is they're here, but you're not coming in. You have to kill me first. Hey, uh, that doesn't sound like a real practical solution if they're holding a gun. <laughs> you're not. That's, so. a, that's the righteous one, though. You see, that, that's the righteous yeah, yeah. one. Yeah, well, the question is, if you actually do it, if you got it in front of that situation. I tell them, they're here, but you're not coming in. Unless you're you trying to keep me. yourself and them alive. <laughs> You know, maybe you want no, to try to get a little utilitarian here. The, the point is not life. The point: the man who loves his life will lose it, and the man who loses his life shall gain yeah. it. Yeah, and the it's not your. It's, it's, that's and, horrible and, teachings. That's, that's yeah. saying, hey, blow yourself up in a plane because you know you're oppressed and and your God needs you to do this to find the Holy Land. Well, no, we I mean, got to catch Christianity, but it's the same aspect. No, we, we don't have that. We we have persecution is our our glory. Like we're glorified in persecution. We're not. Well, you can do that, Taylor, but but you don't have the right to make that decision for the person who you're trying to protect too. So, and if you if they drop you and you're happy to be dropped, you know that doesn't help the person in the back who they who they now has nothing between them well, and, and the guy chasing them. So, so I I took them into my home at risk of life and limb, and now that that. Nazis at the door, and they're like, "Are the Jews in your house?" And I go, "Well, fuck yeah, you gotta kill me though. I'm keeping so, them. I don't so want they you kill, to kill you, them. and then they go to the back room and get Anne Frank. So what does that yeah. accomplish? That, well, I couldn't stop them from killing the Jews in the first place. All I could do was offer them a place to hide. Well, so then the question really, what go back to the original question was, would it be more functionally useful to say? No, there's nobody here but me, or something along those lines that would reduce the odds of this person in the back getting caught. If you have no concern for your own life, that's fine. I, I say no, they search the house anyway. There's variables. Hmm? I say no, and they search the house anyway. There's variables. No, I'm a liar. I'm, saying, I'm just saying, just you know, it may be it may be a losing it may be a losing bet, but you, you take your best shot with what you got. I you just thought you don't take your Taylor. Go ahead. Uh, Taylor, you bring this Jewish person to an atheist and you say please hide them somewhere but don't tell me where and then you are no longer forced to lie and then the atheist will do the right thing and not directly tell the Nazis where they're at but then the Nazis ask me who did you give them to and shit and that's even worse well then you can hold your ground because you know you're righteous and you're willing to give your life so but that's your decision for oh, yourself. Yeah, I could do that. I could go, yeah, I, I know who I gave it to, but I'm not telling you. That's yeah. not lying. At least you want to do is buy them time so they can get out the window or something. I was like, yeah, I know. Exactly. I, I know exactly what I did with them, but we're not telling you. <laughs> that's yeah, the Bible tells us we're blessed with persecuted. It's not it's not a it's not a shame to be suffered as a Christian. It it actually glorifies God. Yeah, and Mother Teresa did, did it spent a lot of time um, endorsing suffering, uh, where she could have spent more time building hospitals instead of uh, places to just kept people uh, in in pain and away from um, possibly having their diseases resolved because she believed that line. Also, she believed that suffering was getting you closer to God. So, well, yeah, there's people that believe some of the Bible, preferably. Yeah, so the, this is not a great strategy. 
So. That, that's correct. I agree with you. I think you should take all of the Bible or none of the Bible. That's not at all what I was saying, but <laughs> I'm saying that was a bad. I, I, I don't know how to equivocate to be if, if it's not all of the Bible or none of the Bible. Uh, it's a different topic, but okay. So, so switch topics. So all of the Bible or none of the Bible. I've got a friend who says um, when I ask him how do you how how do you rationalize thinking of you know talking donkeys and things like that as a realistic thing. Well, he said basically first you have to assume that God exists, and then second you have to assume that the entire Bible is true. It's like great. So you've just you've just created a, a a creator who has a magical ability to do anything, which completely takes your way your ability to judge anything in terms of what's right and wrong because what he does is right by definition, just like Nixon and Trump and the president does it as legal, you know. So it makes no sense to assume these things up front because it it gives you an it's it's a it's a it's a way to give you an in to then buy shit that's really unbelievable. And you end up you end up living on a house of cards that way. Um, hey. Go ahead, Jimmy. I'm done. Um I, I <laughs> you know, like I, I don't know. I think that's kind of like a straw man, man. Like uh, um, what what religious people are trying to reflect for is is Clearest reflection of reality, you know, and and uh, I think that's the dialogue that's going on, and I really like what empathetic atheist is doing. And uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna head out right now, but uh, I really appreciate you fucking. Uh, I, I I apologize for cursing, but uh, I, I, I really appreciate you. I, I I appreciate you inviting me, man, and I I like the conversation that we had, Jenna. It was it was awesome, dude, and I like. Um, I hope everyone likes the video. And, uh, uh, it was a real interesting cool thanks for coming on man. yeah with all of y'all uh uh phil i would love to have a one-on-one -on -one with you uh, uh uh taylor you know dude i'm always with you you and, uh, you and i are gonna jimmy you and i are gonna have to figure out what drugs we both need to take so we're running at the same speed <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> so. now, i would love to do that I, I would love to do that with you i got um, caffeine hey, and hey, clonopin and my end and alcohol is an option so <laughs> um, hey, 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 thank you, man. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you. Okay. All right. Have a good night, Jimmy. All right. See you, man. Thank you. <laughs> I'm serious about that. So I'm just like, I have an anxiety disorder, so I take clonopan and <laughs> when I do these things sometimes. <laughs> Taylor, can I ask Taylor just a side question? Taylor did a live last night with Peter. Taylor, is your butt still sore from that pounding last night? I have oh. Peter and I have Richard Batson together. Yeah. <laughs> that's what I, that's what hopefully we can refer. I'll, I'll do the lives with them and Jimmy. Noah, have you ever heard of Richard Batson? I think he's on the show, right? Yes. He's on the beard. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yep. He's a very, very unusual interpretation of what's what the Bible says. He's got his, and, and nobody else has it. It's his own thing, and it's very odd. Last night, did you see? Did you watch it in my video last night? I did. So Jimmy, and or not Jimmy, uh, Peter is, is believes in the myth. So we're talking about mythicism, and Richard White knighting Peter a lot. It, Peter reveal, or Richard reveals that, that Jesus never existed on this planet. <laughs> Some other planet. <laughs> I think he said no, something. No, 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 no. <laughs> Richard, Richard believes that Jesus existed and the crucifixion and resurrection happened on 23 different planets. No, but not this one. Yeah, we had ours, at least according to him. Just No, but according to Richard, Jesus didn't exist on this planet. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why Peter doesn't believe Jesus existed at all. I mean, it, 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 Richard, Richard's white knighting him, like, yeah, yeah, because Jesus didn't exist on this planet. He did it, he lived in a, a different dimension. He's consistent. He's very consistent. He's, he's quite brilliant, actually. So I think <laughs> it, there's a great sci fi novel or uh, movie screenplay in there someplace. But he could, yeah, he could probably make a lot really of money off it. Yeah. yeah. 
but uh but yeah so Noah, um i because i kind of i kind of want to dive a little bit more in into your your studies of the bible okay um are you you said you're not as much as a literalist about the bible as pastor taylor correct mm -hmm. so what what do you not take literally in the bible what what is more metaphorical to you a lot of psalms um i, I know a lot of people like to use that as a proof text for flat earth i don't think you do necessarily with Pastor Taylor, but i know a lot of people who take a lot of things out of context and there's a lot of figurative language in the bible that is obviously figurative that people then build doctrines around and then use that to say that the bible literally says the earth is flat because it's on pillars and stuff like that um and then like in revelation i don't and that one's a lot harder to parse what's literal and what's not but i don't believe right. every single thing in revelation is like literal leave fiction on the table as an option what's just that? saying leave fiction well, yeah, on the table not, as an option to sand <laughs> and for, re for, 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 that, that's a, not, for a reason so hold on hold on because th this is that's not necessarily my position on the bible is that there's not any metaphors or allegorical hmm. in it but like what you say like like creation is a metaphor or or ezekiel right like his his right we were talking about ezekiel 23 yes and, and that's that's obviously he's he's taking is israel and egypt and he's writing about them as two horse a hula and omla and he's writing a poem about or that, that's obviously not about two literal women but i believe that it's ezekiel literally writing it and he I don't think it's about two literal women. I think it's about yeah. a donkey dick and a horse splooge. <laughs> but as, as far as like literalism, we're saying like the Bible literally is history, and it literally Jesus is a literally a person who died. He literally God. He, he literally, and these are the literal writers. These are the literal meanings. I got, of this. I got back in at the right time. Two women and donkey dicks. <laughs> Hell yeah! So, yeah. <laughs> he's, Thanks, he's literally Thanks, writing. I, I, Thanks, James, for 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 getting me back in. Because because when hey, Jesus can I wrong. give a shout out to Richard Moss, two hundred subscribers? I went on his channel. It said one ninety nine, so I clicked subscribe. I have yeah. screenshots. I am the two hundredth subscriber. Hey, yeah. Good stuff. yeah, biblical literalism is is really emphasizing the the creation mm -hmm. and the historical canon. It's it's not it doesn't mean like there's literally two sons and there's literally a rich man and Lazarus and oh you know, there's literal literal so uh, with the Lord word literal the if I was to tell you that there is no literal resurrection account in the Bible at all what would you mm -hmm. say to that I would uh, disagree I would yeah you disagree would you yeah. agree that there is a crucifixion and that a body, the body of Jesus, was placed in a tomb, and the tomb was What was that last part again? I said, would you agree that Jesus was crucified and put into a tomb, and the tomb was shut, and guards were placed outside? Yeah. Would you also agree that later apostles had seen, or people had seen, the risen Jesus walking around, speaking to them, angels telling people to go, to go into town and say certain things. Would you agree with that? Apostles yeah. and 500 other people. Yeah. Okay. So what happened in between both of those things that's in the Bible? It says that Jesus went down and, and conquered death and came back with the key, the keys to death and hates in his hand. But we're, we're all about when talking about the resurrection, a lot of times when I'm talking, talking to Christians, it's all about the, we know it's true because there were eyewitness testimonies of this happening. Mm -hmm. Was there an eyewitness testimony of Jesus literally resurrecting? Because that would be the most important part. Well, that, that's what happens in the book of Revelation slightly. I, I have a question. I have a question regarding to this. And it, I, I have, first of all, I have to say I have no clue. Uh, we got a couple of people in here who've read the Bible, so maybe they can help. Um, 
I I was watching a show where they talked about the resurrection, and they brought up a thing that I wasn't aware of, and I'm not sure if it's even in the Bible or in some extra biblical uh, text, but apparently Jesus had a twin brother. Anyone ever heard of that explanation before? A twin brother? No, I've heard of Mormon Joseph or not Joseph James. Yeah, James. they weren't James. I'm, but, I'm so, still so, here. I was just muted. There's no twin. <laughs> you know yeah, in the you're, you're, not, you're not Jesus's brother, James. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, Jesus is mentioned to have four oh, brothers. But, well, hold on, just real quick. When I was younger, my parents used to say, "Jesus Christ, James, get over here." So <laughs> I thought my brother's name was Jesus Christ. <laughs> Yeah. That's evidence that may, right there. That may have or may have not been said to me with a different first name, obviously. But no, so but really, um, uh, there, there there should be accounts uh, that talk about Jesus having a twin brother. If if that is the case, that would explain a lot about the resurrection, um, because we know for a fact that people who were crucified weren't uh, the bodies weren't returned to to uh to their family they were put into mass they were fed to the dogs yeah they, they were put into mass graves so mm -hmm. um either yeah either put into mass graves or there were a lot of times where they were and, and this was this was a demeaning act by the, by the people who were crucifying these people they would actually break their legs while they were up on the cross so mm -hmm. their diaphragm would would have to withhold their entire body their legs wouldn't be able to prop them up which would make it more painful normally the people would last a couple of days before actually dying on the cross jesus lasted i think six hours on the cross right two yeah he, he lasted a, a couple hours on the cross and i mean my argument going back to extra biblical things things that we know uh, from many different societies, many different types of people, was that either they would go into a mass grave or they would uh, be thrown on the streets and the dogs would feed on them. And I know from being in Afghanistan that dogs are wild out there. Dogs are not pets. They literally, I, I, I was driving down the, driving down the road in, in, a, in an up-armored truck and I hit a dog. And when I came back, the dog was literally in half on one side of the road and the other half was on the other side of the road, and there were other dogs just eating the dead dog. I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's just something that happened back then, and that's probably why nobody can find the body of Jesus, is because he was eaten and digested by yeah. animals. Or, or, I, I still that think I still think the, the the mass grave is is uh, the most likely uh, explanation because that that was common practice. People who were crucified were thrown in the mass grave. And that, as as you said, that was that was to uh, to further add 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 some insult to the people who were, were were crucified. They weren't they weren't allowed a decent burial. So the fact that that Jesus, for some reason, uh, did have a, a, a burial, and and even on the exact same day as he died, that that doesn't That's line up reason. with. With common sorry, I was letting Pastor know that he was breathing into his mic real hard. Yeah, so um, that that it it conflicts with what we know about history, and so if if there are texts that talk about Jesus having a twin brother, that would really explain things because people would actually see the risen Christ, except. It wasn't him. Well, there's there is another simpler explanation, and and I just want to make sure this stays on the table that Jesus was a real person, that he was persecuted, um, he was, you know, hung, died, and that was pretty much the end of it. And the whole rising burial tomb thing is just a story added by later writers to to. Um, basically to prove to the to the Jews that their savior had been resurrected and wasn't because as I recall from some reading I don't remember where I'm sorry that um, 
when you look at it historically, the Jews expected a Messiah. Jesus came along, claimed to be one, and then just died like a lot of the other ones who claimed one. So there was there was some um, potential benefit to uh, someone taking the story later on and running with it. Just they just had to add to it to to give it something to uh, to make people believe in something, you know supernatural and then it just kind of run, runs from there when 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 paul takes it and starts writing about it too yeah so uh, the, uh, another, th another thing that that would uh would 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 add to what you just said phil is uh, i don't know if any of you are subscribed to trey the explainer he he usually mm -hmm. does stuff about pa paleontology uh he did a couple of things on uh on the bible uh dug up some some information that i wasn't aware of um one of the things in in the last uh video that he did was uh the ending and i'm not sure i, I think it was john but that has that has a an ending that is in dispute so there are three different endings in in the yeah. document no, that, that we have be. yeah yeah, the gospels get more elaborate as as yeah. they go on, and one builds on another, and they all, they all add some what appears to be in more and more mythology because the story yeah, but, seems to be so built up. This, he he talked about an ending that was added in uh, anywhere after four hundred A.D., and that mm. was the long ending, which was uh, pretty much the entire resurrection. Um, the there are earlier copies of the text that just end uh, where. Uh, a woman enters the tomb and finds it empty, and that's it. There's no explanation for what happened. It's just empty. And then there's a short yeah. ending and there's a long ending. So, um, yeah, I mean that works too in terms of a of a normal explanation. That's possible a possibility too. Right? The, the, he he died. He had a tomb because he had followers who gave him a tomb, and then you know the thing gets grave robbed and again that becomes the end of the story the the real story the history if you will right. so so mark is the one that you were talking about not john but oh yeah 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 that that, that could where, be. where did it say anything about jesus having a twin brother see and that's that's what i'm that's what i'm still digging into uh, by the way pastor if you if you move your mic up a little the breathing won't go in the mic that much and you still be fairly decent and it, when it comes to audio, so just Can you hear me? Out. Yeah, yeah. I thought Great. we had Darth Vader on the call for a minute. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> I usually click it off. I thought you and Peter were about to have your final Jedi battle. <laughs> no, no. So, so I may, I may come across as someone who just comes in here and turns the whole thing into a shit show. That absolutely is not, not my intent. And and so last night I was on Pastor's channel for a long time got really heated at times i i think we still left on on a friendly note richard was a bit bummed that that pastor left uh when when i left because he was thinking that he he could have a one-on-one -on -one. so oh we could we could, that could still part. happen yeah you, it, let anything go yeah you, you have you have to you have to make that happen because he, he was really bummed out a little wait did he just left yeah yeah, I just want to throw out. I watched a, a, a Darth Dawkins versus Richard video a couple days ago, yeah. and that that was just a blast because Dawkins was totally thrown off his game because because Richard has such a unique story, and he and 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 it doesn't match. There's there's no there's no uh, it's not in his script at all. It's not in Dawkins script about what if what if a guy says Jesus was from multiple planets? And it's just like. What the Sorry, and and there's no way that you can yeah. get Richard uh, off of his usual calm. Yeah, it's like and, it's like trying to play chess against someone who who thinks the pieces move a whole different way than you were taught. You know? Yeah. So yeah, that was that, interesting. That was, that was a that was a great show. I really liked that. Was that was fun. One. So you guys always talk about Darth Dawkins, like everybody's mentioned him. Is he like the the troll to the atheists? Like he's he's, yes. he's a he's a current um, a presuppositional mm -hmm. apologetic who uses the transcendental argument for God. There's some version of it. He's on one of my 
and really and really weird uh, philosophical yeah. philosophical reasons that that are probably only known to to himself. I I, I usually call him the the Saitem Brugenkate on steroids. Because, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and there's no way you're going to get a decent conversation with him because no. the moment he gets in, he fires off his questions, rapid fire, and if you don't give the correct answer, he will bug you until you do. Well, he gets into and tactics. There's, so there's no when, he's, when he starts yeah. to lose, he gets into he turns to tactics. You know, yeah. like not accepting the game, the answer you gave. And, you know, it's well, that's the wrong yeah. answer. And it's like, well, what do you want me to say? Me. Just the. Can I, I, can I finish, please? Can, can I can I finish, please? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. So yeah, and 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 he will say that while over talking the other person. So that's like his <laughs> catchphrase when I finish. Well, yes. To mindful of health in the chat room, that kind of goes without saying. It's I'm too well, polite. So, but if if you if you really want to piss him off, uh, all you need to do is stay calm and insist on him answering some of your questions, and he will yeah. just blow up. And rage quit because he's, he's not in the business of answering questions. He, he is a smart guy. I mean, he, you know, people like that they are they are pretty they are strong in their philosophy and their logic, but they have to stay on their script. Um, if they do make an error, for most people, it's hard to catch. I I really have a hard time following people like that. Um, although I did catch one error that was pretty early on. He had said um, that. They're either he put up a dichotomy, and I'm always I, dichotomies. Dichotomies to me are always red flags. Um, that something may be forced that's not really correct. He's he put up a dichotomy that said that either you either God exists or doesn't exist. He can't have a third option. So do you believe that God exists or doesn't exist? And there's no third option if if you claim there's a third option like I don't know that's an excluded middle. A dichotomy is either yes or no. It's, like, yeah, it's and, either A uh, or not A. And, and, there's, what, and, there's, and what's, what's, what's wrong with that argument is that there is a difference between the existence of God, yes or no, and the belief in the existence of God, which is yeah. not a yes or no position. But, there, is, so there, the, there are third positions he, there. He has, he has a second one, and the second one is uh, that the universe is contingent on something that is and then universal out, absolutes yeah uh, on 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 an absolute ultimate uh an absolute ultimate something i have no clue what what it might be yeah if you say if you say it's not the god of the bible then you have to come up with something else because he won't he won't right. uh he won't allow you to say, hey, maybe I don't know if that's even the case. I yeah. don't need something ultimate and absolute to base my thoughts on to live my life. And uh, it ends in, you don't know, I have been given it from God, therefore I'm correct. No, no, no. He, he will just not allow you to say, uh, I see no need for that concept because in order to deny his concept, you have to come up with something equal. And if you That's don't, an he will he will, he will completely blow up. Yeah, and there's really, there's almost no position in philosophy other than those really strict logical absolutes mm -hmm. that can't have five different opinions to it. I mean, philosophy as a field is, is it's, it's kind of, you know, it's like uh, five philosophers Five opinions, kind of a thing. And, often. and, then, and the From fun thing is, oops, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and the fun, the fun thing is, in philosophy, you have multiple forms of logic. So there mm -hmm. are forms of logic that do yeah, not have so. excluded middle. Yeah. Uh, so, and that's a, when he says that he's a philosopher, he doesn't grasp that there are multiple forms of logic that can be applied. I, so, you know, I don't. I, I don't know if he does or doesn't. I mean, it's like I don't grasp all those. No, I mean you're you're right. You're right. So, so so when you're talking to someone like that and they they kind of put this sort of authority uh, feeling onto you and you don't follow it, uh, it it makes it look like you're incorrect, where yeah. you just may not be understanding what they're saying. So um, other people watching this 
can can think that they're telling the truth or that they're correct because they seem to be so sure about what they're saying. So, you know, and it's it's, it's only after time. Um, I mean, I've heard Side Rudin and Kate speak, um, uh, and I've even he it. even he makes mistakes. And it's it's only after time and great effort. I mean, like years. <laughs> Uh, that you can even develop a, a need to, or, or an ability to, or a skill, I guess, to to unravel this stuff that's just normally going over your head. From and so, so if, if, even, if you, this out. even if you Sai, don't want to, Sai has admitted that he got the whole thing from uh, Google, the presuppositionalism, because he was bad yeah. in apologetics. He did yeah. a search on Google, stumbled on presuppositional apologetics. Yeah. And just ran with it from from there, and that's what I used that particular part that he had had since yeah. deleted from his website. I used that at the start of the show, and said, "Hey, man, you didn't have a revelation from God. You had a revelation from Google, and only because you were looking for a revelation." Yeah, and and I equate talking to people like that, like two people talking in a different language, trying to communicate, and it's never going to work. I've heard Sai talk um, on the side to his to his friends and things um, to the true among the true believers, and and the conversation is very much what you would expect. There's no apologetics. It's the God is my savior. We're 100 yeah. percent convinced, kind of a thing. Um, and then he when he gets into talking to an atheist, who gets gets into this apologetic script. So he's he's not going into honest conversation and and. The one thing I, I think remember. A lot of Christians get confused. I just wanted to throw this out there. I know I have. Is that yes? Why would why would somebody who says I don't know take the negative as a title? Which atheist, as it was first coined, was the Christians who didn't believe a certain God exists. And in strict terms of philosophy, atheist would be God doesn't exist. Versus, I know we've covered this before, but. I it really kind of, I was like, so they're atheists, but they're not saying God doesn't exist. They're just like trying to treat this as an innocent default position. And I think that it's very confusing at times. And that's probably where the script you guys are talking about comes from. So James, uh, when it comes to that, I think there are two things. Um, there are people who claim that you can't use the word atheist and you have to use the word agnostic because this is what it says in the, uh, uh, what was it? A, a Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Uh, yeah, dictionary. Uh, that every, every, every source these people give, give both options. So you can use both atheist and agnostic for exactly yeah. the same thing. What I think is a little bit more important is when you talk to people, uh, most people will use the colloquial term atheist. And mm -hmm. if you want to talk to people, you have to meet them at their level. If if you talk mm -hmm. to me and I tell you that I am an atheist and uh, let's say I'm, I'm an agnostic atheist. I'm not sure whether or not a God exists, but I don't believe in a God. That's me. That would be that would be my position. You need to address me there. You don't you don't need to to uh, tell me that my position is wrong or, the, or that I'm using the wrong wording. When it comes to the colloquial sense of the word, everyone knows what is meant with the word atheist. It is a lack of belief in a god. So period. I I, and, I I would I would agree to a point. Like for the ACA we talked about earlier, the Atheist community of Austin's website says that we use atheism as classically defined as agnosticism on their website. And they expect that the callers who come in or who call in would understand that fact. So I, I get what you're saying for sure, but there is confusion. And that's why it's best, like you said, to ask the person, how yeah. are you using terms? Right? Exactly. Because what do you mean by atheist? Because I have uh, there's Christians out there who lack a belief that God doesn't exist. Stretch your mind for that for a moment. When you open up terms and definitions, now they can lack a belief that God doesn't exist. Yeah, double negative. And, and so if you if you're going to put a label on someone who doesn't hold that label, if I was uh, to address uh, Taylor, and I would tell him. Uh, um, 
I don't know. You're, you're a Mormon. I think I think he and I would get into a big fight because I'm misrepresenting his position, <laughs> and and he would be justified in pushing back and giving me hell for doing that because I think that is a dishonest thing to do. So if 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 you want to talk to someone, ask them what their position is and if needed to define what they mean by by the word and then we're done there's no more fights you don't have to disagree or agree with someone if someone wants to call themselves agnostic and still don't believe in a god fine in my yeah. book you'd be an atheist but if you want to call yourself agnostic if you feel more comfortable with with that label then that's up to you yeah, and I'm concerned. I'm concerned about false equivalents that are applied to um, to atheists too. Because, to be honest, everybody is agnostic. None of us know everything. So there are we are agnostic atheists and we are agnostic theists. Depend, depends on the claim. Depends on the claim. Mm -hmm. So I would think that there'd be a few of you in this chat who would be hard atheists towards the Christian God. You. Would argue you would have argumentation that Jesus didn't exist, or no, argumentation not, that no, um, not Jesus, not Jesus. I mean, Robert Price was here the other day. He's a mythicist, and he's not a hundred percent. I mean, he stated no. that. But he stated as, that. as far as, far That's as a, claims, so, it's a probability conclusion, really. Yeah, but as as far as the claims made about the Christian God, that God cannot exist. It's impossible for that God to exist because yeah, so you would be you would be an atheist towards the Christian God, but you'd be agnostic towards like just a general prime mover God. But that's fair because you yeah. have an argumentation for why you disbelieve the Christian God exists. Well, so, and I mean, also, and also, I don't know all God claims, so I cannot claim that there is no God. But you when you have a book, sorry. when you have a book like the Bible, and you have a book that uh, tells you about a certain God and has conflicting claims in it, that God cannot exist. You talk about the but, omnis, the, the omni words, uh, logically the, conflicting with each other? Uh, well, the, the, that, those, are not, those are not the only ones. Uh, there's, Merciful there's, and just. I'm yeah, back so, so God, okay. God is called all-loving and he is called just. Those two things are mutual exclusive. Okay. He, he's either all-loving or he's just. Before before we go into this giant rabbit hole, it's about <laughs> one o'clock in the morning my time, and I have to work tomorrow. I would be more than happy to let this conversation lead into an offline conversation. But I have I have to get some sleep tonight, or else I won't. Be I just had a twelve hour day today, and I am fucking tired. Okay, <laughs> just just to, would, just to, just to be fair, uh, James James called me back in here. Uh, if if there's anything specific James wanted to address, because I was I was out and I just saw in the side. Oh chat. yes, I loved I loved you. You kept directing Taylor back to, um, Pastor. Did you can you repeat back what I just said? <laughs> it was just <laughs> the funniest thing, and I loved it on that video. <sighs> okay, well, so... I would love to see you and Taylor debate is Christianity. Yeah, we're gonna um, fight. To, to be fair, to be fair, James, I asked that question knowing full well that there could be a point where someone asks me that question and I don't have an answer because Taylor and I are are similar people. Uh, when we get heated, we we don't always listen to what the other one is saying because we get all fired up and we want to get, get our point across, and that's and that's where I need to work on myself and need to calm it down a little so that's why i'm watching justin a lot because justin has a completely different approach <laughs> and and i mean you're never too old to learn and i can learn too and i learn from a lot of content creators on here and i i, I will go on record that at least at this moment justin's show is one of my favorites I like, like his, I like his, I like his line of questioning. I like his line of questioning. I like the way that he conducts himself during a, a, a show. I, I'm pr I'm pretty impressed. And, and we so, need to keep respectful because I don't want Justin to have to change his show title 
to the sometimes empathetic atheist. <laughs> well, so he, could, he could always he could always have the excuse. I got the asshole Peter from Holland on, and he derailed my entire show. So it's not my fault. Go bitch it at him. But so no, really, I'm I'm i and I mean this. Um, we this is why why I support newer channels because everyone has a different approach in talking to someone everyone has a different way of asking questions everyone has a different way of when the things get heated to deflate the uh, the, the 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 whole uh um escalation a little i think justin is doing a really good job when when stuff like that happens and uh, as i said for, for at least for the moment um AXP, Talk Heathen, Justin. Not necessarily even in that order. Ooh. High price. Wow. Peter, are you looking for me to like get on my knees? No, no. That's, I mean, you can ask. No, you can ask <laughs> anyone. What what I don't do, I don't go over and kiss people's ass just because I want to or I need something. I'll be honest. And, and you've seen me be honest earlier on in the show. I will jump in. And if I have a bone to pick with someone, I will do so. I'm I'm honest. If if I tell you that you're doing a good job, you're definitely doing a good job, and I, I stand by that. So, <laughs> and and I don't give out compliments in order to be liked because just ask around. Not everyone likes me. So, so when can we have this debate, Peter, between you and Taylor? You is Christianity viable? No, he can't compare himself to me because he wouldn't sit idly by for 20 minutes if I called him a hostile agnostic. Where I took, I sustained the Mormon comment. It's, it's Latter Day Saint, by the way. It's no me. longer referred to as Mormon. Try me. Yeah, Latter Day Saint versus Mormon—that is a marketing ploy right there. Yeah. <laughs> and Noah, come back sometime. Ask some questions. Well. well Thank you, Peter, for, for your kind words. I really appreciate that. I really hope that other people feel the same way. Uh, no, this is your first time on the show. I got you as my special guest next time. So I got I got a couple more rabbit holes for us to go down. Uh, I hope you got, you know, hope you got a few questions, a few things to take away from this. You know, you gave me a few things to take away from it. Pastor always gives me something to take away from it. So thank you guys for, for being respectful in the chat and having good conversation. Thanks to everybody in the chat. Uh, and thank you to all of my patrons, Phil being one of them. Um, I just got a new one. I think Kristen just uh, uh, signed up for my Patreon. Um, so I'm, I'm growing. I got five patrons. I got a lot of support. I got a little over 200 subscribers. So if you got friends that would like this, if you know people that would like this type of content, please, everything is down in the description below. Go ahead and support me. Thank you guys for showing up. Hold and everybody, hold on. One, one, one more thing. If someone has a decent computer lying around and wants to get rid of it, get in touch with Justin. He could use one to get <laughs> to up his production value a little. So if you got a good computer, shove it towards Justin. Yes, absolutely. And and when when I do get that computer, I will get a green screen that says "blow me" behind me. <laughs> <laughs> I know someone who has uh, who has uh, uh, Hold on. Pastor Taylor's got that copyrighted though. By the way, yeah, you're gonna Hold need on. your own slogan, <laughs> Justin. Hold on, we'll get that up on the screen for everybody. Okay, that, you get it up on the screen, and then I'm shutting this shit down. That's a great way for the empathetic <laughs> atheist show to end with a big blow me sign. <laughs> yeah, just saying. I'm the right. empathetic atheist. Is that showing up? Hold on. Fuck, man. Oh, no. It was good to meet you. Hopefully, next time I can hear oh, more from you. Yeah. I probably you will be here next time. Nope. Oh, there we go. Is it up? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It was a game cartridge. Oh. They will never yeah. know. The struggle was so real. 
<laughs> the views and opinions expressed in this memory are not necessarily those of the empathetic atheists to the sponsors. <laughs> <laughs> or StreamYard.com. <laughs> oh, oh no pastors were harmed in the making of this video. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you guys once again for, for everything. I'm going to go ahead and end it because I have to have uh, a conversation and I have to go to bed. But Goodbye. thank you guys for coming on. Until next time, anybody that was in my after party, please, if you want to get on another after party, let me know. Um, you guys stay home and stay safe. And I'm going to, if my computer will catch up, roll the video. <laughs>